Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Lender, Craftsman, Dog Dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. of Madison in an OCC showdown. Week two, the Arrows come in fresh off. A big win on the road at Mount Vernon. Welcome in, everybody. 66 degrees and beautiful for homecoming here on the campus of Ashland High School. Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne bringing you all the action here live on a beautiful Friday night. Tony, Arrows with an opportunity to get two in a row here and get it right against a struggling Rams squad. 
Yeah, Ashton got, got in the win column last week against Mount Vernon. Going up here against 0-3 uh, Madison Rams. Madison Rams had to take a couple of weeks off because of COVID. Whole school shut down. They went against West Holmes last week. Tough team, tough loss. But yeah, good opportunity here to get a win against the Rams. The UH Injury Report brought to you by University Hospitals Samaritan Medical Center. Learn more at uhhospitals.org. Tony, we got a couple guys on that report here tonight. Yeah, Hayden Hensel went down last week with a sprained MCL. He's going to be out as long uh, with Brent. Brady Welsh is still dealing with a shoulder. Two guys who are coming back, though, for the Rams. Isaac Brooks back in the lineup. Big news for them. We'll be talking about Isaac Brooks all night. And for Ashland, Marion Dennison goes down two weeks ago at Perkins, ends up tearing his ACL, complete tear. Doctor said maybe three weeks he can get back in. He's uh, he's back in the lineup just with, with one week off. That's crazy. Amazing. And from a guy who you have torn your ACL before playing high school football. Tore my, tore my ACL my senior year. They called it. They said, you're done. Now they say, hey, in three weeks, if you're ready to go, you can play. Put a brace on the knee. We'll have surgery after the season. The Marion says, I'll show you. One week off, I'm back in. It was interesting talking to the coaching staff last week about that, and they said, well, it kind of depends on how tough the kid is, right? Yeah, the Marion's going to be a tough kid, no doubt about it. Uh, Brady Welsh, you know, going to be uh, also a tough kid, good wrestler for Ashland. He's going to be back next week as long as that shoulder continues to heal. So, yeah, good news for Ashland. Beautiful night here for football. The Arrows and the Rams starting lineup for the Arrows offense. Landon McFrederick, of course, Caden Spots, and Brian Hasse in the backfield. Stewry, Truax, Maffitt in those wide out spots. See a couple of guys in and out. Offensive line, we'll see kind of who goes in there tonight. Seth Will, Demarion Dennison, Bryson Martin. Maybe see a, a couple of different guys in there, including Seth Shoemaker. And the Arrows will be kicking it off and going right to left here on iHeartRadio, as well as our friends at the OH Report here tonight. You can sync it all up, watch it on YouTube or Facebook as well on the OH Report. We're happy to have him joining us. The Arrows will kick it away, Tony, and the Rams will have Isaac Brooks back there deep for the kickoff return along with Phil Stupka, and it looks like Zane Wynn also back three deep. Yeah, Isaac Brooks, you know, Coach Cedar says, maybe one of the best athletes in the entire conference, not just for football, but when you talk about basketball and track, speedster. And we saw a speedster last week in Johnny Askew that kind of gave the Ashland Arrows a little bit of trouble. So we're going to keep our eyes on number three. I'm sure there's going to be 11 guys on that defense in orange also watching number three wherever he goes to line up. And he's sitting dead center in the middle, ready to go. Well, and you see Isaac Brooks out there uh, has a bit of a soft cast on his right foot, and the kick is squibbed, and it is away, grabbed by an up man at the 20. 25-yard line to the 30 and 35-yard line before Will Keppel, the linebacker, tight end, special teams ace, is brought down after a short gain by Ethan Truax. So the arrows will start on the defensive side. We'll see Demarion Dennison back up in that 3-4 on the end spot, I imagine. Although right now, starting off this possession on the sideline, maybe you might just see him on the offensive line. Seth Shoemaker, Isaac Roop, and a host of other guys, including Seth Will in there. It looks like Bryant Hasse in at linebacker. Seth Grissinger off to a good start as well, and the Rams will bring it out in a tight formation. Hunter Hutchison hands it off, and it's a run right up the middle. Short gain there to Lucas Warren on first down. You're going to see a lot of that today. Lucas Warren, Zane Wynn, that's kind of the bread and the butter for this Madison Rams team. Hand the ball off. It's going to be 75, 80% run, and then when they do take their, their shots, it's going to be deep to number three. Second down and seven now at the 38-yard line, going left to right of the Rams in the white jerseys with green trim. It's a handoff on a little end around, and that is Zane Wynn, and he gets out to the 40-yard line, gain of about two, maybe three. They might mark him at the 41. It'll be third down and four. Just underway here on a Friday night. Good job by the Arrows defense there. Almost catching him. You know, he tried to go airborne and get a couple more yards, and the Arrows actually just caught him midair and kind of pulled him down. Refs called it down. Uh, yeah, bringing up third and medium. An offensive line for the Rams. Mike Schenberger, Preston Martin, Jacob Johnson, Owen McGregor, and Mitchell Russell all pushing 250 and up on that O-line, trying to drive this Arrows defensive line back on the run. Third and four, back to pass. Throws it out in the flat. It is tipped, but I think caught. Brooks has it for a first down. Out in the flat zone coverage by the Arrows. And it was John Metzger out there in coverage, but the Rams pick up a first down. Yeah, Johnny Metzger kind of went vertical there to try to get a finger on the ball, probably, you know, inch or two short from it. So fortunate for the Rams. Uh, Johnny Metzger had a great interception last week. Probably look to see him make another big play here against the Rams. Hutchison under center. 
Tight formation again, handoff from the end around to Zane Wynn. He cuts back, makes Grissinger miss, now comes back all the way to the left and tries to get back towards midfield where he slips and he is down at the 50. There is a flag on the play back at the 49-yard line of the Rams. Those are hard plays for offensive linemen. You know, you think the play's going to the right, so that's the way you start to block, and then all of a sudden you see your running back come back the other side, and all of a sudden you maybe not panic, but you end up grabbing a jersey. So they're going to get called for a holding somewhere. Wait for the official call. Looks like... No microphone tonight. Officials mic not working very well there for sure. No doubt. So that will go the opposite direction for the Rams. Back to the 40-yard line. It's a loss of eight, I believe, and that will bring up first down and 18 for the Rams. Hutchison will go under center, tight formation, a single receiver split far to the left. It's a little screen out on the left side. It's caught at the 42 and out near the 47, maybe the 48, is Tatum Turcott on the outside. So Turcott with his first catch, the junior tight end who split wide, 6'2", 185 pounder. Metzger in on the tackle for the Arrows. Madison Rams only threw 18 passes coming into this game, uh, this being just game number four. But we saw them throw 12 last week, so maybe the Rams are trying to find a little bit of a different identity uh, here as we get into midseason. Under center, he's going to go right up the middle on second down and one to try to get himself the first down. I take that back. That was not first. That was not second one. It was second 11. down and 11. So maybe a miscommunication there. And it's third down and third down. I nine. think nine for the Rams. So maybe it was just me miscommunicating. I think that, <laughs> that was uh, second one. That line of scrimmage marker uh, when they go backwards ends up looking like a first down marker when it was, I think, first and 18 well, to start with. Well, it's an odd call then being on second down and 11 there. And anyway, handoff up the middle. That's Warren who busts through and He's going to get himself to really close to the first down. He's got it at the 42 of the arrows. And the Rams are on the move early on. Nice run right up the middle on the quick hand off like a fullback dive when Warren's that front guy. Yeah, they're al almost showing a couple different options, you know, a dive option, they're coming back with the counter, then the quarterback can keep it, so they're going to be a running team, Ashland knows this going into the game and yeah, you just have to start to clog the middle, make them, make them bounce plays let your linebackers come up, let your secondary come up and, and uh, provide some run support. Shoemaker, Will, and now Caden Briggs in at the line for the defense here on the Arrows defensive line Metzger, Boyd, Colin Rohr has checked in for the Arrows, along with Colton Johnson in there as well. And there's right under center, I should say, is Hutchinson. Throws it out to Brooks, caught at the 42, makes a man miss, and Cotton Rohr knocks him out of bounds, or it's Trey Boyd, rather, who knocks him out of bounds around the 37-yard line. It'll be a short gain, actually a gain of five, so second down and five coming up for the Rams, who keep the clock rolling, and with a nice, impressive drive here to start the game for Madison, Tony. Yeah, Hunter Hutchinson, three for three already, you know, three runs, so, yeah, the Rams showing a little bit more offense than what they've shown on film uh, coming in now game four for them. Hutchison drops back, throws it out onto the sideline. Clayton, uh, Clayton, Caden Clapper grabs it and gets closer to the first down. It'll be third down and short coming up after a quick pass out onto the outside. Ashland's really playing back on those wide outs and yeah, I think the Rams are just almost like it's a almost a run pass option and they see hey if you're seven yards off we can throw it out there and our guy can go get four or five yards so Ashland's going to want to either take a timeout may maybe make some adjustments but more than anything they're going to have to start playing a little bit more tough defense I think we got an injury number eight it looked like Tatum Turcott something happened and his pants came up over his, his, his uh, pads and they had to make him check out it's third down and two handoff dive oh, up the middle and he is immediately met Lucas Warren is met immediately Seth by Wells. Braylon and Hyder and Seth Will. Fourth down coming up for the Rams. And a big one right away at the 34-yard line. It'll be fourth down and three. Yeah, both the Rams and Ashland, you know, probably kicking about 40-yard field goals as their max, you know, tonight. Both kickers were warming up, kicking from the 30-yard line. So this obviously beyond that line. So they're going to be going for it, fourth and two. Fourth down and two, they'll call it at the 34. It's a handoff to up the middle. Warren is going to get himself the first down near the 31. And that is a nice push right up the middle by Jacob Johnson and the guards, McGregor and Martin. Ashland's had a little bit of trouble stopping their run. You know, uh, I think in their first four games, they gave up, you know, 200 yards. Uh, 
defensively to, to rushing teams. Um, Ashland's tried a lot of different things, bringing on some uh, a taller, you know, defensive line front, a heavier defensive line front, trying to find some combination. Um, they did well last week, stopping the run. I think giving up about 60 or 70 yards, uh, but clearly the Rams confident that their strength rushing can go against Ashland's uh, struggle here of, of defensive rushing. They're going to call for the chains actually on this. Not a very good spot for the Rams, I'll tell you that. I thought Warren had that one without a doubt. It looks like the nose of the football is right at the marker and they're going to give it to him. First down. So I, I mean, I know the coaching staff of the Arrows unhappy, Tony, but to be honest, that spot was not favorable. I think Warren had it. I would agree with you, yeah. I think the secondary push, you know, uh, the whistle hadn't blown yet, and he was still kind of going forward. The refs do their best, you know, mark it where they think it is. Good job bringing the chains in, first down. I think, yeah, all in all, probably the good right call. 8.08 to go here in the first quarter. No score yet. The Rams in the first possession of the ball game have taken care of business so far. Hutchison with the ball under center. Man in motion coming right to left. Instead, it's a fullback dive. Again, actually goes out to the left side is Lucas Warren. And he's got a nice gain on first down before the arrows gang tackle him on the outside. And a couple of different arrows, including Caden Schmitz in on the tackle. And Trey Boyd as well. Nice gain on first down. Not the same play, but similar spot on the offensive line where Perkins found success two weeks ago, just off that tackle. Uh, Ashland's doing a good job kind of clogging that A gap, that B gap, but they're finding some success just going off tackle, uh, picking up four and five yards here on, on this opening drive. Second down and five at the 27 for Hutchison and the Rams. He's looking to pass. He throws it on the outside, caught by Brooks at the 19, spins and gets himself inside the 20 down near the 18. And he is tackled on the outside by Caden Schmitz and Trey Boyd in the area as well. So a nice pickup there, pitch and catch between Hutchison and Brooks. First down. It's still an eight to ten yard buffer that those you know DBs are giving them. Uh, not sure if that's you know just going to be a, a coaching change that they're going to get after this opening drive. But yeah, maybe once they get closer to the end zone, they'll be, start to tighten up a bit. And a handoff to Warren right up the middle on first down, and he has picked himself up two to three yards. Depending on the spot, they were at the 17. They'll mark it about the 13. So a nice pickup on first down, another fullback dive right up the middle. That one was maybe a little bit more generous of a spot compared to the, the stingy <laughs> spot. And they wasted no time getting to the line of scrimmage. I had to look down at the monitor to see what happened. Under center, Hutchison quickly to the line. Steps back, quick drops, going to throw it into the end zone. Incomplete. Looking for Turcotte down the sideline in the end zone. Good coverage by Boyd and Metzger. Yeah, Metzger finally got up there and finally jammed them, you know, made, made him run something other than just a simple, you know, seven-yard hitch route. So. Hunter's still looking good though, five for six starting off. And again, for a rushing team, Madison's found some, some new uh, life in their passing game. Only 18 pass attempts in the first three games. And, and we've so seen far, six. Yeah, so maybe they say, saw something on film that they thought they could exploit. Yeah, and I think they're doing the right thing. You know, if they're gonna back off seven and eight yards, you just throw it out there and get one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And if your wide receiver can make a play, he can go for even more than seven or eight. Hutchison to Brooks on the end around. He cuts up upfield at the 10 and gets inside near the five, and we'll see where they mark it. We talked about them wanting to use Isaac Brooks in as many ways as possible, similar to Johnny Askew with Mount Vernon last week, and they'll mark it at the five. It's going to be a first down and goal, I believe. Yep, first down and goal. 6.20 to go here in the first quarter, and the Rams have held the possession here for almost six minutes to start the quarter, Tony. Yeah, and that's kind of what they want to do. You know, they've got seven players that are going to play offensively and defensively, so a slow, methodical game is actually advantageous for the Rams. Hand off to Warren. He goes in easily around the left side. Touchdown, Madison Rams have struck first here at Ashland High School. Extra point will be pending here for the Rams. So a, a nearly six-minute drive, five-minute and 44 a second touchdown drive. And just like that, the Rams come out and whop it to the arrows on homecoming night and deliver the first blow. Yeah, and the Rams haven't put up a whole lot of points yet in two, 2021. Uh, six points in game one and then seven and seven in games two and three. So an opening drive touchdown makes them feel real good uh, with the extra point pending. And here they go to set up. Hutchison is in there as the holder. It'll be Travis Jamison to kick. 
Travis Jamison on court. Jamison, 5'7", sophomore. Lines up for the extra point. Snaps a little high. Good hold. The kick is up, and it is high, and it is just barely sneaks through. 7 up and Rams. Back with more after this on iHeartRadio. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Lender, craftsman, dog dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Welcome back here to Community Stadium where the Madison Rams have struck first, up seven to nothing. After a long touchdown drive, almost six minutes to start the first quarter on the first possession. Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne, Arrow's about to receive the kick. Yeah, just a methodical drive, no negative plays, you know, good for the Rams, not great for Ashland. Uh, more passing than we really expected, maybe in the entire game we saw in the first drive. So, yeah, maybe take the uh, the run-heavy Rams philosophy and throw that out the window here tonight against Ashland. Jamison, who just kicked the extra point, will come on to boot it away from his own 40. Welcome in on iHeartRadio and our friends watching on the OH Report. It's a squib kick up front. Here comes the arrows to grab it at the 28. That's Trey Boyd who breaks one tackle and he's knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line, 14-yard return for Trey Boyd. You're listening to the Firelands Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week. The Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340. Powered by Firelands Electric Cooperative, your local touchstone energy cooperative. The Arrows will get their first crack at it here on offense in the all orange today with black helmets and white trim and black numbers. Landon McFrederick in the shotgun. Arrows with good field position to start. Spots in motion. They get a man to jump. And that will be good news as Evan Davis, the 6'3 junior from Madison, goes on the hard count. And the Arrows will get five the easy way, Tone. Yeah, that's just something you see on game film that, you know, he's prone to jump off, so you start it right away. <laughs> and then immediately Coach Stupka says, you come over to the sideline, <laughs> yeah. young man. You're out. Coach Stupka in his fourth season, 2-30, and 0-3 oh against Ashland High School. He had some experience at Elyria Catholic, Chanel, and Lutheran West before coming down here to Madison. It'll be a keeper designed. It looked like McFrederick, who gets maybe back to the line, might have lost a yard or two there on first down and five. So Landon McFrederick had a good week last week on the ground. They started with a run. Yeah, picked up about you know 50 or 60 yards rushing, 300 more through the air. Uh, of note, Demarion Dennison not in the starting lineup, even though he's cleared to go tonight. So we talked about Dennison in the UH Samaritan injury report. Not in there right now. Trips right. Two receivers to the near side, although one of them is Spots, and Spots in the slot. And they're going to throw it over to the near side, caught by Metzger inside Rams territory at the 49. That will be a pickup of five on second down and six. Third down and one coming up a very approachable third down here for the Arrows as they get themselves into good position here with a big third down coming up early on on the first drive. Yeah, Johnny Metzger's been the favorite target all year. You know, 12 big catches last week, 174 yards. He'd love to have another game like that tonight against the Rams. And in the shotgun, spots going left to right, comes back into the backfield with McFrederick. They reset, look over to the sideline. Strips right, single receiver is Metzger to the near side, and now coming from the far side is Hasse, who played quite a bit last week and did a nice job into the slot. In the shotgun, now it is Hasse in motion, going left to right, could be a double pass. Nope, hand off to Spots, cuts back to the right side, inside the 40, and down at the 36-yard line. Nice job there by the Arrows running back. Peyton Myers in on the tackle for the Rams at the 36-yard line, gain of 13. Yeah, nice big hole by the offensive line, getting movement by the offensive uh, 
offensive line just firing off, um, playing up with a lot of motion, you know, to see if the Rams can't get into some bad setups. Arrows in the shotgun, first and 10 at the 36. 5.40 to go in the first quarter. McFrederick has time, throwing over the middle, incomplete overshoots intended receiver Braylon Hyder at the 10-yard line. Yeah, early on here, the Rams were lining up with three defensive linemen, and because of Ashland does so much four wide and five wide, you know, they're spreading the field out quite a bit and leaving a big hole right in that middle. So, you know, Landon uh, did the right thing, took a shot over the middle, probably would like to have that one back, but, you know, first and 10, not a bad time to have an incompletion. 5.37 to go in the first quarter. Arrows down 7-0 after a quick drive, or a long drive, I should say, by Madison here. Week two of the OCC schedule for both of these squads. Nick Frederick in the shotgun is going to make a long toss down the left sideline. Metzger intended receiver. Incomplete. Knocked away. Good defense. Down the sideline by Phil Stupka, the defensive back. Coach's kit. 5'8 senior with a nice defensive play. Yeah, big blitz there by the Rams. You know, Tatum Turcott came from deep secondary right up the middle. Had pressure in Landon's face. So good 50-50 ball. Uh, both coaches, both Ashland and the Madison coaches, talked about you know needing to win those 50-50 balls, and whoever comes down with the most of those will probably win the night. Third down and 10 at the 36. Shotgun snap. McFrederick in trouble. Push, pushed out of the pocket. Rolls near side. Throws it out to Hasse at the 31. Caught inside the 25. And still going and pumping the legs. And finally out of bounds at the 22. Pickup of 14. First down arrows. McFrederick does a nice job on what looked like could have been big trouble in the backfield. And Hasse sat down and they got it to him. Yeah, good pump fake. Got that defender in the air. Landon was able to just slide over to the left, you know, two or three yards, and it's almost a little of that of that fire drill that you know sometimes once you run your route as a as a wide receiver as a running back you just freeze. But the best thing is come back to your quarterback, be helpful, and we're gonna get a, a penalty here, I think, on the Rams. Well, Seth Will playing left tackle here today in place of Demarion Dennison. He got shoved. Oh, so well, they're gonna say he maybe he tripped first. Down. Yeah, he might have slipped first or started inching his way back. False start on Will, and that'll push the arrows back five yards. First I, down I, and fifteen. I guess it's possible. Like uh, you know, when you're pass blocking, you, you have a, a lot more weight in your butt. You know, because like you want to like pop up. That maybe he just had too much weight going backwards and couldn't stop the momentum. Well, he got hit by the turf monster maybe as well. Spots in motion left to right. McFrederick back to pass. Pump fake looks. Rolls right. He's out of the numbers. He's out by the hash. Now he's going to get chased by Turcott, and he goes running out of bounds at the around the 20. A couple of Rams went hard and collided into each other over on the Rams' sideline. They are off the field of play, but somebody is definitely down over there on the Rams' sideline back behind the bench. Can't quite see who it is. It won't stop the game because they're off the field. So a tough collision out there on the outside. A couple of Rams coming from different directions. And that looks like they're looking at the leg over there on the right side. And they're going to whistle they're gonna and stop let it. a sub come in here and make a little stoppage. Officials timeout. Officials timeout here at Community Stadium. Each week throughout the high school sports season, we will select the iHeartRadio Athlete of the Week. Presented by the Neil Cady Insurance Agency of Ashland and Norwalk. Specializing in auto, home, life, and business insurance. Get a free quote, neilcadyinsurance.com. That's neil, K-A-D-E-Y, insurance.com. See photos and read about all of our athletes at wncoam.com. Well, hard to tell who it is over on the sideline at the 25-yard line, about four or five yards off behind the out-of-bounds sideline there, but one of the Rams' defensive starters is down and holding his, their look, they're attending to his leg, and he it looks to be in some amount of pain over there. And the Arrows and Rams will get back going here after the officials time out with 5.13 to go here in the first quarter. I'm kind of surprised the officials stopped the, the game, you know, because they're going to go back into play, and obviously he's still down and being attended to by the Rams' training staff, but I guess player safety being a priority. Glad to take the break. McFrederick in the shotgun. Twins to the near side. Twins to the right tight. Back to pass. All kinds of pressure. Turcott and company. They've got him trapped in the backfield. He rolls out, gets away from it, throws it incomplete, but there's a flag in the area that would probably be holding. Yeah, one of the Rams defenders at least put a hand up to kind of you know, give an indication that he was being held. Uh, we'll see what, they, what the penalty, though, is. Dominic Weitzel, one of the 
Well, maybe not Dominic White, so I think it was 68. We'll say Jacob Johnson actually in on the pressure along with Tatum Turcott on the second down and 11 pass. And Landon McFrederick had nothing he could do about that one but roll out of there and throw it in, <laughs> out of bounds. And we'll wait to see what the call is. They're coming over to talk to Coach Cedar and give him the explanation. They're going the opposite direction, so it's going to be on the arrows. 5.05 to go here in the first quarter. It's a five-yard penalty, though. What's a five-yard penalty? Uh, who knows? An eligible receiver, maybe? I'm just guessing at this point. We can't hear the referee's mic, so my apologies. Didn't see the signal either. <laughs> Hasse checks in for the arrows. Colton Johnson and Trey Boyd to the near side. Hasse and Metzger to the far right. And it is McFrederick in the backfield with Spots. Man in motion. Little flip to Spots on the right side out of the backfield. Makes a man miss at the 30, and he bullies his way forward to about the 25. Mark it at the 24. Gain of five. That'll bring up third down and 11 for the arrows. After the five-yard pickup, out of the backfield to Spots. Yeah, kind of a, a fake sweep play, then a throw back to the other direction, but it almost happened too fast. You know, if you can kind of let Spots get out there five or six more yards and let the defenders be flow into the right and then throw it back to the left. Um, but, yeah, the Rams have had good pressure in Landon's face. No sacks, no tackles for a loss yet at this point. Um, but the Rams have had some success getting pressure, at least in Landon's face, in this first drive for the Arrows. Third and 12. McFrederick in the shotgun. Pressure right up the middle. Pushes him out of the pocket to the right. He's going to have to do something with it. And he is run out of bounds near the 28-yard line. Great pressure. You called it, Tony. You said they've had some pressure on him. No tackles for loss. Well, there's one right there as he loses a couple yards back to the 28-yard line. That'll be a loss of four, and it'll be fourth down and long for Ashland. Yeah, won't go down for a sack because he ended up turning it into a run, but essentially that's a, a four- or five-yard sack uh, setting up fourth and 15, 16, right at that line where, you know, Isaac Roop could probably take a shot at this, but not sure, you know, this early in the game if you want to run your kicker out there. Light wind going from the right end zone to the left. McFrederick in the shotgun could also pooch it here on fourth down and long. He's done quite a good job punting this year. Colton Johnson probably got away with an illegal shift there. Now he goes in motion left to right. Back to pass. He's going to roll out. All kinds of pressure. He's going to have to do something with it at the 35. Throws it up into the end zone. Metzger! Metzger. Touchdown, Whoa. Arrows! What Are a great you throw. kidding me? 28 yards, clean field. McFrederick finds his man, Johnny Metzger, from 28 out on fourth down and long. Yeah, I'm not sure any other combination out there could have done that, but Johnny Metzger and Landon made eye contact. You'll see it on the 08 report replay if you're watching over there, but made eye contact. Landon kind of looked towards the corner of the end zone, and uh, Metzger just took off over there. Great pass, great catch, just getting the ball inside the pylon for a touchdown. Well, coverage out there by Noah Finley and Isaac Brooks. Great job by Johnny Metzger. And Landon McFrederick with what looked like a little backyard football after that play broke down. Roop comes out to kick the extra point with 4.08 to go in the first. That's a gutsy call on fourth and 15 too, Brandon. Sure is. Coach Cedar gambles and it pays off. Seven apiece. Back with more here on iHeartRadio. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Seven apiece, the Arrows and the Rams in a 
Really nice game here to start, Tony Van Dyne. Yeah, two great possessions, uh, both by the Rams. Good response by the Arrows. You know, we thought maybe they were going to stall out, but good job booting out, getting your shoulders squared. We were talking about that off air, making a nice throw. Metzger being consistent. You know, again, I'm not going to jinx him, but he has been consistent catching the ball, bringing it in, making yards after catch, yards after contact, does it again, puts six on the scoreboard, and Isaac Roop adds one more, make it 7-7. Seven, seven. Here comes Roop to boot it away from the 40, and it is high and it is deep. Isaac Brooks going to go back and grab it at the 3, to the 5, the 10, 15, Good 20, wedge. up the middle. He's got one man to beat, and it's Roop, 35, 30, and Roop tackles him at the 25. What a return there. Wow. That is about 73 yards in that vicinity. And Isaac Roop stays back, makes a touchdown saving tackle. Yeah, we saw one last week with Johnny Askew taking it 99 yards. You know, Isaac Brooks here going 75. Good job by the kicker, number 13, Isaac uh, 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 Roop. Um, he's a defensive end, so it's not like he's making an unheard of tackle. Uh, but yeah, just kind of runs him out of bounds and finally gets him down right at the 25. It kind of looked like they left him back there as the safety in a way because he didn't go downfield. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, just to say play it deep, let's not give up points. Hutchison hands it off right up the middle, and that is going to be Lucas Warren on first down. Gets the carry from the 25 down to the 25-yard pickup, and the Rams pick up where they left off on that first drive. Yeah, Lucas Warren getting the load of the carries right now. His eighth carry of the game. You know, typically Mansfield's going to be pretty balanced between Zane Wynn, number 27, kind of running those sweeps, but for right now it's right up the middle uh, going to Lucas. Seven apiece here with the Arrows and the Mansfield Madison Rams. You're listening to the Firelands Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week. The Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340. Powered by Firelands Electric Cooperative. And Hutchison back to pass, looking on the outside. He's got a man and is caught. And they got the first down and more. He was looking for Noah Finley out of the backfield. That'll move the chains on second down and five with 3.08 to go here in the first quarter. So the Rams methodically once again moving the ball down the field. Yeah, that almost looked like it had double pass opportunities, so that may be something that the Rams are going to set up, you know, just throwing back and then maybe a double throw down to a wide receiver later here in the game. First down and 10. They'll mark it at the 13-yard line. Beautiful evening here for football in North Central Ohio. Lights are on, and it's 62 degrees here. Light wind from the south. Under center is Hutchison. Hutchison hands it off to Warren. Warren cuts from the left back to the right, tries to push his way forward, and they will blow it dead around the 12-yard line. Short gain on first down, gain of one. Good job of the Arrows defensive line up front. Looked like Caden Briggs in on the tackle. Seth Grissinger came in from the linebacker spot as well. It's kind of a unique play. I don't know if it's the play design or if it's just his running style, but it's almost like he's running right up the middle to the A gap, and then if it's not there, he goes out to the B gap, and if it's not there, he just kind of keeps bouncing until he finds a hole. So not sure if that's a, a style of offense or running, you know, a run type that is unique to the Rams or if that's just the way that he's been taught is to say, hey, run it up the middle and then just keep bouncing out until you find something that opens up. Noah Finley checks into the backfield with Lucas Warren. Isaac Brooks split, split wide to the left. Phil Stupka is right at the end on the right side. Back to pass. Hutchison throws it. It's Finley out of the backfield. And he is wrapped up for a loss. Brian Great Hossie. job by Brian Hasse with a tremendous tackle for loss. Back at the 16, loss of four. That'll bring up fourth down and 13. Yeah, good job by Hasse, just you know, putting a foot in the ground and attacking it, not just trying to like meet him on the sideline and saying we'll try to get zero yards. He knew he was going to beat him to the punch. Good job just going after him. Hasse has played really well the last two weeks here after receiving limited playing time in the first few weeks of the season. The arrows on the defensive side need a big third down stop. Minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Hutchison under center. Man in motion is Stupka going right to left, back to pass, short drop looking for Brooks in the end zone, and he throws it away. It well, could have been offensive pass interference. That's gotta there be is offensive. a late flag. It's gotta be offensive. <laughs> Brooks just short of tackled the defensive back, Trey Boyd, in the corner to avoid what would have been potentially an interception. Yeah, quarterback threw a little bit too far into the corner, and you know. Yeah, I, I think it was catchable, you know, but yeah, I think Isaac just turned into a, a, a defensive player and, you know, just went kind of low, took his knees out, took his ankles out. I would be surprised if it's anything but offensive pass interference. The officials are meeting and discussing, I think, whether it was 
a catchable ball. They're walking it off from the 16, so they've gone the wrong direction. That's going to be 15 yards. Would you take that penalty? Third, um, third and 15? I, I, that's a great question. They're in field goal range there, so I probably would take it. They're, yeah, they're clearly not now moving the ball out to the 31, bringing up third and 30-something. <laughs> we'll see what the scoreboard says. I think it's going to be third and 27, uh, somewhere in that range from the 31. It would have been about a 33-yard field goal, which is in the range and a potential make there. Arrows now with a good opportunity to get the ball back. Third and 27, Hutchison and the Rams not designed for these third down and longs. Back, it's a quick handoff actually up the middle, and I think it's Warren once again it is. And from the 31 down to the 27, gain of four, and he is slow to get up, but I think he's okay. Might be cramping or hurt that left leg a little bit. Lucas Warren, one of the stalwarts of this Rams offense, and they don't have a lot of guys either, Tony. Yeah, carry number 10 for Lucas Warren, you know, to start off this game. He had six on that opening drive, so four more here. And even if he doesn't get the ball, he's still taking a pounding because when you fake it to that dive back, you know, most of the defensive linemen or defensive ends, they don't really care if you have the ball or not. You just get <laughs> tackled. So he's not just getting tackled when he gets yards or, uh, positively or negatively. He's getting hit every play. So brings up big fourth and 23. Gain of four on that carry, and it looks like they're going for it on fourth down and 23. Cameron Stevens checks into the ball game. Now we've got a whistle and a timeout called by the Madison Rams with 33 seconds remaining. There was one on the play clock. Fireland's Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week. With the Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340. Powered by Fireland's Electric Cooperative, your local touchstone energy cooperative. Arrows coming out of this timeout, Tony. We'll have to see what the Rams do. You got fourth down and 23 if you're the Rams, but you're in a weird spot. You're at the 27. It's way too, it's a 44 yard field goal. Probably not going to attempt that. It's a weird spot to punt. So, Coach Stepko's got a decision here. Yeah, and we've not seen any formation for the Rams other than 10 guys bunched. You know, they're bringing out uh, center, two guards, two tackles, and then two wing uh, running backs slash wide receivers. They've only been used as, as running backs at this point, the quarterback and the fullback. So they're not even a team that's built to pick up 15 and 20 yards throwing. They only have one wide receiver split out wide. So I would assume they're going to run the one play that they have, which is probably a go route or a post route to Isaac Brooks. Um, or attempt a field goal here and see what they can get. Brooks is in there, along with Caden Clapper now, and Rams coming out of their timeout. Clapper now split wide near to the right. Brooks is in the backfield. Hutchison under center. He's going to hand it off. Nope, he's looking downfield. He's going to try to lob it out in the flat, and it is Brooks who catches it at the 22, and he's immediately met by Brian Hossey and knocked out of bounds. That'll turn it over to the Arrows after the five-yard gain. I think that's their takeoff of out and up, but he barely got out and barely got up before they threw it to him. You know, he caught it with a four-yard reception, got maybe one more before it got pulled down, turnover on downs for arrows. You know, Tony, it's, it's not quite a punt, but it's almost like a punt in a way where you're saying, well, we might get five or ten yards, but it's fourth down and 23. We'll, we'll get the ball into Brooks's hands and see if he can do something. Yeah, that's true. And maybe you, could, you pick up a penalty, you get a defensive pass interference, automatic first down. Yeah, maybe some good things happen, so. Not going to judge it for the Rams. Arrows in a shotgun. McFrederick with a keeper trying to get outside against Turcotte. He does, and he is brought down around the 27-yard line after a nice pickup on first down of five. McFrederick with the keeper. Just a straight design run there. Just a, a boot out to the right, you know, trying to get Landon. Uh, typically, you'll, you'll have numbers. You know, once the running back becomes a blocker and your quarterback becomes a running back, you should be advantageously positive for the offense to pick up good yards. So, Arrows picked up five. That's the end of the first quarter. Arrows and Rams all squared seven here on iHeartRadio. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Lender. Craftsman. Dog Dad. 
We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Back to your community stadium, Arrows and Rams about to get underway in the second quarter. Arrows now going left to right. McFrederick in the shotgun on second and five. Hits Metzger at the 32, and he's pushed out of bounds near the 36. First down, Arrows on a nice little pitch and catch to the outside on the near side. Metzger and McFrederick, best of friends on the football field, no doubt. Yeah, Lynn went four for six there in the first quarter, 51 yards, just 28 yards rushing for Ashland to start that first quarter. Uh, finding some success throwing the ball, still no success running the ball, but yeah, when you're doing well throwing the ball, might as well take five wide, which arrows come back out again. And off to Spots. Spots goes around the left side, and he is stood up at the line. Well, maybe a gain of a yard or two. But, uh, spots hit hard by Hunter Hutchison, the quarterback and starting Mike linebacker for this Ram squad. I keep wanting to call them the Jets because their uniforms look a lot like the New York Jets. Yeah, Hutchison, I think, had like 14 or 15 tackles last week. You know, kind of uncommon to see your quarterback out there making, you know, most of the plays on defense. But, you know, when you have an athlete that can do it, you know, you put him in there and you let him do it. Twins left, trips to the near side. Second down and seven. McFrederick looking to pass. Short drop. He's got a man caught at the 43 and pushed out of bounds at the 45, maybe the 46-yard line. First down. And a nice little throw on the outside. Grayson Sturry's first catch of the ball game here tonight. Nice catch there and a first down for Sturry and the Arrows. Yeah, Sturry's not had a lot of catches on the season, but when he's had, they've been meaningful. Had a big 60-yard touchdown on a trick play. He's run a slant for a touchdown, so good to see him getting reps here in the middle of the field too. McFrederick, keeper, left side, cuts it outside behind Hyder and Will, and he's into Rams territory around the 49-yard line. Gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Another little RPO run pass option there for Ashland. Could have thrown it out there to a wide receiver screen, but saw that they had numbers up in front of them. So get the ball, check out for the quick throw. Not there, so Landon just tucks it and picks up five. In the shotgun, McFrederick, five wide. Second down and five in Rams territory, a whistle, and we've got a timeout by the Rams. We'll take one as well, seven apiece here on iHeartRadio. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Frederick and the Arrows back to pass on second down. Looking downfield for spots at the 25. Incomplete out of the timeout. Quick to get to the line of scrimmage and spots. Couldn't come up with that one. McFrederick overshoots him. Welcome into the booth. Brandon Wells, Tony Van Dyne here on iHeartRadio as well as our good friends of the OH Report. Hey, this portion of Arrow Football on WNCO is brought to you by America's Home Place. Custom home builders at Township Road 4. 30, 405 rather, and Route 30 in Jeromesville. Build a better future at americashomeplace.com. The shotgun now, big third down, third and five, and they get the Got Rams him. to jump Same once guy. again. Oh my, Evan Davis 
Come on over. You've got a seat on the bench, young man. 10-27 to go. Uh, yeah, first first play Ashland had on offense. You know, big number 57 for the Rams jumped off. He got pulled out. Uh, big moment here. He's going out one more time. Uh, just can't do it. You know, don't listen to the cadence. Watch the football. That's what they teach you on day one as a defensive lineman. Unable to do it. Gives up a free first down to the arrows. Nowhere to hide when that happens, right? He knew it, too, right? It's embarrassing. It's like a, you know, Seth Will's got one, you know, on the offensive line for arrows you just take it and go out beat him next time first and ten for the arrows mcfrederick play action roll out to the near side he's got a man open it spots at the 43 makes a man miss and he's hammered by hutchison at the 38 oh my hunter hutchison the starting quarterback absolutely pounds spots who gets right up and says that's okay is that all you got you ain't so bad spots is a tough kid spots takes the Shot and keeps rolling. Under 10 minutes to go in the first half. Second down and four. And the shotgun McFrederick with trips to the left. Single receiver, receiver to the near side. Handoff. Spot says, I'll take this one again. He's through the line. 35, and he is wrapped up by Hutchison. This time around the ankles at the 32, but not before. Spots and heroes pick up another first down. Big crowd here tonight. Homecoming. Here in Ashland, Ohio. The Rams have brought a pretty good contingent as well from down 42. The northwest side of, northeast side rather, of Mansfield. These teams, long rivals in many different sports in the OCC. Frederick in the shotgun. Spots to his right, trips to the left, single receiver near side. Looking for that single guy. It's Metzger. Throws it up over the uh, head of Metzger. A couple of good defenders back there in Finlay and Isaac Brooks. And the double coverage. And Metzger can't pull that one in. Yeah, this home crowd wanted a penalty. Probably nothing there. Uh, you know, lots of time for the defenders to go over there. Collapse, you know, almost ended up being a double team on Metzger. So Metzger's made some great catches all season. He's going to make some more throughout the rest of the year. But that one's probably a little bit more than you could ask number 21 to do. Isaac Brooks looked a little bit dinged on that one because he ran into Finley in the Friendly coverage. fire. <laughs> Finley fire. Well done, sir. I like it. And the shotgun back to pass on second down and 10. Flush shot of the pocket. McFrederick is in trouble, goes left, and he's in trouble again. And Turcott pushes him and forces him out of bounds, I should say, rather at the 35. There is an arrow down at the 35-yard line. One of the arrows offensive linemen who hops back up, Seth Will, who has taken a few beatings into Marion. Dennison checking in for the arrows right now for the first time here tonight. Tony. Yeah. yeah, we'll keep a number, uh, our eyes on number 58 uh, towards ACL two weeks ago. Um, got the clear, though, from the doctors that if he can take the pain and, and function out there that he can play. So he's going to check in left tackle and give Seth a chance just to get checked out, make sure he's all right. You know, Seth Wills, again, offensive line, defensive line, two-way player. So need to make sure he's all right and get him back in the game. They get a jump, but they, and they're going to yep. call it again as the Rams jump. Now, I don't think that was Davis. Different guy this time. So he's saying, thank you. I'm glad that was you and not me. That actually was uh, one of the other offensive linemen, Preston Martin. That's his replacement. So they're going to flip again. Uh, the fact that you know the defensive lineman's name uh, going into quarter two is not a great sign for him. But he's having a good game uh, regardless of uh, the, the penalties. And the shotgun, McFrederick, trips to the near side. Twins to the left. Another hard count. McFrederick really getting that back down, that count down. He's in trouble now, though. Pressure up the middle and a sack. Now the arrow's interior offensive line gave up the sack. Hutchison on the sack for the Rams, along with Will Keppel from the linebacker. A couple of blitzing linebackers up the middle, Tony. Yeah, nothing real fancy going on with the Rams. They're just bringing their three down linemen and then three more linebackers and saying, hey, you don't have the numbers to block us all, so we think we can get to McFrederick before he can throw it. And sure enough, that time they finally did. Uh, more importantly, though, you know, they're, find, they're finding ways to get pressure against number one, Landon McFrederick. Uh, they're either going to have to find ways to boot him out, sprint him out faster, or finding quick, quicker hitting plays and not letting plays develop so long. Fourth down and 16 for the Arrows, and they're going to call a timeout here. I believe the Arrows, they were lined up like they were going for it. They're going to call a timeout. We'll keep it here, 8.18 to go in the first half. You're listening to the Firelands Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week. 
the Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340. Powered by Firelands Electric Cooperative, your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative. All right, so we're about four minutes into the second quarter. It's seven apiece. The Rams, who come in 0-3, the Arrows 1-4. Tony, anything you've seen so far tonight surprise you? Uh, I think just the, the, the pace of play. You know, this is just the second opportunity for Ashland to have an uh, offensive drive. You know, we've only seen Madison with two. No turnovers, no uh, sloppy play, uh, but very methodical, slow offense and defense. Uh, Clock's not, you know, running, you know, with a 30-point lead, but we're already at 8-18 uh, with Ashland out here to punt for the first time. Um, yeah, just a very slow game for both sides of the ball right now. McFrederick will line up deep to boot it away. He's standing at midfield. Isaac Brooks is at the 22-yard line, so I'm not sure if Coach Stupka and the Rams coaching staff is convinced that the arrows are booting it away. Now Brooks goes back a little farther near the 10. High snap. Great catch by McFrederick. He's going to tuck it and run. 35, 30, 25. There's a flag Saturday. down. McFrederick. Would get the first down, but I think this is coming back, Tony. Yeah, great fake play, uh, fake punt, great catch by McFrederick just to keep that ball from going another 20 yards over his head. And we've seen it all year. Ashland come out in a very unique offset punt formation, and we keep saying, hey, there's going to be a fake punt coming, there's going to be a fake punt, and punt coming. They try at that time. The numbers were right. Landon did pick up the first down on the play, uh, but they're going to get Ashland for holding and bring him back another 10 yards. Hard to do a fake punt twice in a row, though, here. <laughs> Well, it's also hard to pick up 26 yards on any down, but fourth down and 26 coming up for Ashland. Second time they've gone for it, though, right? On fourth and 16, you know, got a touchdown the last time. You That's know, right, 28-yard touchdown, I believe, to Metzger. And uh, so that will bring the Arrows punt unit back out, I believe, on fourth down and oh, no, forever. They, maybe he didn't pick up the first down. Oh, they, they declined de it. Declined the penalty. So they were just short. Wow. I thought he made the first down. That's so, my fault. Yeah, me too. Just short. They will mark it at the 23 just to clear up the confusion. It'll be first down and 10 now for Madison, who declines the penalty and will have the possession. Must have been about a yard short over on that far sideline. Rams running kind of a, a no huddle offense, not for speed, but everyone out there has a wristband, including offensive linemen for the play calls. Hutchison under center. Back to pass, looks near side. He's got Turcotte who catches it at the 26, and he bullies his way forward near the first down marker. Might be a little bit short at the 32. He will be one yard short. Trey Boyd in on the tackle for the Arrows. Nine yard pickup there for the Rams. Seven apiece, under eight minutes to go in the first half. We talked about it in the pregame, you know, the Rams only threw 18 times in their first three games. That was pass number nine attempt here uh, Friday night against the Arrows. I think they're going to eclipse their 18 for the first three games total. I think that might be very accurate here tonight. <laughs> Hutchison under center, single back, little wing back offense. It's an end around. It's Brooks who has it. He gets outside, now tries to cut back. Now he's going to cut back even oh, farther and big trouble. Brought down by the Arrows defensive line. Great play by the homecoming king, Logan Bartholomew. Yeah, they teach you once the play's over, you don't give up on it. You just run downfield, chase it from behind. Why? Because sometimes that offensive player is going to reverse field and try to come back. Good job bringing them down for a big loss. And we've got an arrow down, though, in the middle of the field. Give you a number there. 66. It's Seth Shoemaker, the senior defensive and offensive lineman. Looks to be okay now as he heads this way towards the sideline, but the arrows will, not sure if they had to burn a timeout there or not, but nope, they're calling him back out onto the field with 7.07 to go in the first half. Arrows can't afford too many more dings on that offensive defensive line, Tony. Yeah, you know, I think last week, you know, coach said they were down four starting offensive linemen at one point in the game, you know, when Hensel went out uh, and they just kept kind of grabbing, you know, the next senior, the next junior. They put a sophomore in there for a little bit. Uh, a little bit of health came back this week, but yeah, you don't want to see any more guys go out this week or for the remainder of the season getting into the middle of the OCC. Third down and six coming up for the Rams. A big one for Madison, trying to convert and keep this clock rolling. Under center, full house back there behind him. Man in motion coming around. It's a handoff right up the middle. And trying to see if that was Lucas Warren or Zane Wynn. It was Lucas Warren. He gets to the 30-yard line, going to be short of the first down. It'll be fourth down and a long three. 
Good job by Caden Schmitz, just sitting in there in the middle. Kind of does the same thing that the Rams do. Plays clean up there. And that he's a free safety, but really he plays kind of a, a free Roman defender that he can drop back in defense. He can be a blitzer. He can play man to man. He kind of does it all. Uh, going to Navy next year to play some Division One football. Lucas Warren, the junior, will come out to punt it away. He's standing at his own 18. Johnny Metzger back at the 36 of the Eros. Six and a half minutes to go here, all square at seven in the first half. Punt is high and short, and down the right sideline. It bounces at the 45 inside Arrows territory and goes out of bounds right there. So not a great punt, 24 yards. The Arrows with 6.17 to go in the first half, Tony. We'll have an opportunity to maybe put some points on the board going into the second half. They'll also get the ball back to start the second half. Yeah, just the third drive here for Ashland. Uh, offensively, you know, uh, finding some success passing, though. You know, they've been able to, to find Metzger. They've hit uh, a completion to Story. They've hit spots a couple a couple times. So they're finding a little bit of rhythm, probably not the rhythm that they would have liked uh, against this Madison Rams defense. But, yeah, trying to establish some sort of nice six, five-minute drive would be great here. Run a little bit of clock as well as get some points going into halftime. Frederick in the shotgun. Back to pass, looking, pushed out of the pocket by Davis for Madison. He's going to tuck it and run, 45, and he's hit hard. Ball's loose, but it goes right into the hands of an arrow, and it's Caden Spots who then runs it forward into Rams territory at the 48-yard line. That could not have turned out any better for the arrows. A really, really good piece of luck for Ashland. Yeah, just got a helmet on the football there. You know, when Metzger was trying to get a couple more yards, bounced back with some speed. You know, that ball was going to go back 15 or 20 yards. Uh, luckily, number 20 spots was just kind of trailing the play ends up grabbing it midair and ends up making just as many yards as Landon would have had so a lot of excitement <laughs> uh, luckily for Ashland uh, no change of possession or you know big very, losses very fortunate second down and two and I think it was Hunter Hutchison who got a helmet in on the ball to knock that ball free if you're watching on the OH report listening here on IHAR radio Hand off to Spots. Spots goes outside to the left, cuts back to the middle, and runs over the linebacker, Will Keppel. First down, Arrows. That was a man's run there for Caden Spots, the sophomore tailback. Yeah, Spots took that you know kind of big hit off that pass play, and ever since that, it seems like he's running with a little bit more passion, a little bit more determination. You know, he knew he was going to get tackled, but he was going to get two more yards after he got tackled. So good job by Caden, just running with passion, running with energy. Homecoming here in Ashland. The Arrows coming in one and four off a big road win last week. Hand off to Spots again, right up the middle. And he's brought down by Turcott Davis after he gets to about the 39. Gain of three. Beautiful night for football. The Arrows in what most fans and pundits would say is a must win for Ashland. Yeah, Rams haven't beat Ashland, what was it, 2014, I think was the last win. So, you know, we, we've gotten used to beating Madison, but, you know, any given Friday night, you got to come the, out and do it again. And the shotgun, McFrederick looking downfield for guess who? Metzger, and he overshoots him at the 10. Good coverage by Noah Finley for the Rams. That'll bring up third down and seven. McFrederick just overshot him. Didn't get quite enough air on that one, Tony, and let him run under it. Good defense, though. Good you know, yep, good coverage. Man the man knew he didn't have anyone help, any help over the top or underneath, so you just got to run with that wide receiver and make a play on the ball. So good job. Third down and seven coming up. 4.21 to go here in the first half. Make sure you stay tuned for the halftime report by our friends over at ONN. And the shotgun. McFrederick looks left, throws over the middle on a little slant on the far side hash, and it's caught by Colton Johnson, his first catch of the night. It'll be short of the first down, though, but they pick up a couple down to the 37. It'll be fourth down and five for Coach Cedar. Looks like they're going for it, Tony. Yeah, it's a, kind of that no man's land. You know, they're sitting out there on the 38, so you feel weird just putting it 15 or 20 yards, and yet you don't want to turn it over on the 38 with now under four minutes to go in the second quarter. Madison hasn't put together a whole lot of offense short of that first drive, though, so maybe Cedar's thinking, hey, even if we don't get this, hopefully we will, but if we don't get it, our defense is going to hold them. Colton Johnson, who made that catch, comes off the field. It looks to be a little dinged up. Courtney Turner from... UH Samaritan will give him some attention and check it out, see what's going on. We've got a timeout 
on the field as the arrows were approaching the play clock. Uh, close Our down to zero with 3.32 to go. Tony, 7-7 here, arrows and Rams. You're listening to the Firelands Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week with the Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340. And our friends over on iHeart are in our friends over on the OH Report. Powered by Firelands Electric Cooperative, your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative. This game's kind of playing out a little bit the way most Madison Ram games have. You know, they seem to be really competitive in that first half. Uh, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but, you know, they've got seven players on the offensive and defensive side that kind of play both ways. Um, what's typically been happening is Madison plays a really good half of football, and then somewhere around that third quarter and fourth quarter, they, they start to kind of wear out and tucker out. So I'm sure Ashland would like to see more than seven points on the scoreboard at this point in the game. Um, they probably had a little bit more aspirations of putting up some points. Uh, Madison's given up 40 points twice here this season. Uh, they held, uh, you know, week two, I think their opponent to 14 points. So Ashland uh, is probably a little disappointed in, in not seeing a lot more points, but Madison right on their scoring average for the year. Uh, again, six, seven points is right where they've been all season long. They're going to, looks like the arrows, I should say, looks like the arrows are in a punt formation of some kind. They've got all these crazy punt formations. It's McFrederick who's deep around midfield. Isaac Brooks standing at the 15 for the Rams. Just never quite know what's going on with these punt formations. It's a good snap. McFrederick grabs it, punts it high, and Brooks not going to have much of an opportunity to return this one. It takes an arrows bounce at the 16, all the way inside the five, and they'll mark it down at the four-yard line. The arrows with a tremendous punt. It only comes up as 33 yards on the punt, but a tremendous job to pin them inside the five down at the four, Tony. Yeah, just about a perfect punt. You know, you could argue that it wasn't down at the one-yard line, but anything inside the 10 is a good punt. Anything in the five is going to be a, considered a great punt in my book. You know, last week we saw two safeties, one uh, for Ashland, one against Ashland. Um, the Rams, I don't think, uh, today have registered a negative uh, run or pass play. Uh, so I would, I would think the Rams are going to be very conservative here. Uh, again, just running the ball up the middle. Madison under center is Hutchison. Warren in the backfield. It's a keeper by Hutchison trying to get away from that goal line and gets himself out to maybe the five. They'll call it just a gain of one. They marked it at the four. So second down and nine, 3 0 Five and counting both teams with just one timeout remaining. Yeah, and you know, knowing Coach Cedar and being back here right on the five yard line right now, uh, he will use that timeout um, if they don't pick up more than three or four yards here uh, to force a punt, if nothing else. Because again, when, once you get a punt formation out there, lots of things can go wrong bad punts, bad snaps, bad. Yeah, plus good, that good you're returns. that close to the end zone, you got all kinds of options. We've seen some crazy plays this year, no doubt. Hutchison comes out under center, second down and nine. This time he's looking to pass. Throws it out of the near side, looking for Brooks, and it's incomplete, underthrown. Throws it at his feet at the 13. Brooks had some room, so a better throw there, and they would have had a first down. Yeah, another big cushion for him. Uh, Hunter now eight for 10 for 47 yards for Madison Rams. Big third down coming up for Madison. Third and nine at their own five, 233 to go in the first half. Arrows and Rams in OCC week two play, all square at seven. Yeah, unfortunately for Madison, you know, that incompletion turns out to be a time stopping play, uh, as good as a timeout for Coach Sheeter and the Arrows. So, you know, the Arrows could get this ball back with well over two and a half, you know, 215 still in, in the second quarter. Under center, Hutchison hands it off to Noah Finley, who tries to go around the right side. Ball's loose, and it is recovered by oh. the Arrows at the nine yard line. The Arrows come up with a big loose ball. Finley went around the right side. Grissinger hit him hard and stripped it out of there. Schmitz came in, and it looks like Colin Rohr, I think, came up with the loose ball. Remember that time you said anything can happen when you're by the goal line? <laughs> that was just a couple seconds ago, I that, remember. That wasn't even on our list of things that could happen. We were talking about fourth down, not third down. Good job by the Arrows, forcing a, forcing a turnover, you know, not causing a whole lot of turnovers yet uh, in 2021, but a great opportunity here now inside the 15 with 2.24 to go to put some points on the board. 2.24 to go, like Tony mentions, first and goal at the nine. McFrederick in the shotgun. Single back behind him, whistle in a timeout, Madison. They've got one left, and they say, let's call it and get ourselves set. Oh, here we are. Each week throughout the high school sports season, we will select the iHeartRadio Athlete of the Week. 
presented by the Neil Cady Insurance Agency of Ashland and Norwalk, specializing in auto, home, life, and business insurance. Get a free quote, neilcadyinsurance.com. That's Neil, K-A-D-E-Y, insurance.com. See photos and read about all of our athletes at wncoam.com. We'll give you a look at some of the scores at the half if we have an opportunity to take a look and see what's going on down the road. Lexington hosting Mansfield Senior. If you listen to the pregame, you heard Aaron Hines talking with Coach Sean Adams, the defensive coordinator down there. Some big OCC games tonight. Tony, the Arrows next week will be at Mansfield Senior, which is always a big game for the Arrows, regardless of what the records are for either of those teams. And then at Lexington the following week. Yeah, kind of a fun night, you know, for Ashland, you know, uh, obviously here at home against Madison, but, you know, Mansfield Senior versus Lexington, those are our next two games, and then our final two games are going to be West Holmes and Worcester who are facing off, so kind of a fun time for the OCC to find out uh, who's going to rise to the top and, uh, you know, dominate this football season. McFrederick in the shotgun, man in motion going left to right. He's going to roll out to the near side, looking in the end zone, looking, pushed out of the pocket, throws it away. Back of the end zone, second down and goal coming up. Hey, find all the scores from Football Friday night on the North Central State College scoreboard at our website, wncoam.com, brought to you by North Central State College. NC State can change your life and prepare you to change the world. That's probably where we're going to check out the scores at half. We'll go check them out and see what we can find out. 2.17 to go here after the incompletion where Metzger wisely just threw it out of bounds nobody open single receiver to the left spot sidecar to the left of mcfrederick he's going to go in the direct snap mcfrederick splits out wide it's a run right up the middle to spots and he's met immediately on second goal for maybe a gain of one i never quite understand the wildcat tony if that guy doesn't ever throw the ball that's how the wildcat originated when they put guys like ricky williams ronnie brown with miami and those guys would make a couple passes out of that shotgun formation. Did you see them throw the ball, though? I've never seen it. I've, I've never seen it. Back when it originally started, and Sperano, who was the head coach at Miami, they ran it a lot. Ronnie Brown, who was left-handed, could throw the ball really well. And that's actually, and you know, you've seen some of that with guys like Tebow and stuff like that. But it's hard to, to deke guys if that guy doesn't throw the ball. Anyway, there's my coaching for the day. In the shotgun. <laughs> McFrederick, play action, keeper around the right side, not much there, and he kind of gets himself a couple yards down near the five, and it'll be fourth down and goal at the five-yard line with 118 to go, and now Coach Cedar's got an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. Yeah, Ashland came up short on the fourth down and goal last week, you know, down in Mount Vernon. Uh, you know, uh, Cedar probably took a look at that and said, hey, if I had the opportunity one more time, I'd probably kick the field goal. And that's exactly what they're going to do right here with uh, under a minute to go in, in the second quarter. They're on the right hash, the near side hash, fourth down and goal. It will be from the 13, a 23-yard field goal for Isaac Roop. Snaps low. Hyder has to pick it up and run. He's in trouble, and he gets inside the five, and he is tackled by Noah Finley at the four. So the low snap costs the Arrows an opportunity to kick the field goal. Sophomore Luke Bryan, the long snapper, struggled. Hyder couldn't quite come up with it cleanly. Made the right decision to say, whoa, we're not getting this one off smooth. So he tucked it and ran. Got himself a yard, but not quite enough. Now 42 seconds remaining in the first half, and the Arrows and Rams in a battle. Yeah, so much of that extra point and field goals or timing that, you know, the kicker starts his steps right when the snap will start. So even though Hyder ended up getting the ball, got it down, you know, he could tell that, you know, Isaac Rube's timing was just going to be off and he was just going to at best just swing the leg at it. So he did the right thing, call out fire, pull it up, try to get what you can. Good job by the Rams standing him up on, at the four-yard line. Hutchison under center. They're at the four-yard line. No timeouts left for the Rams. Going to hand it off. Right up the middle, that's Warren again. And he's going to get himself to the six yard line. The Arrows do have one timeout if they want to use it here to try to see if they can get anything going on, but I doubt they're going to use it. Lucas Warren on the carry Under 30 seconds. Eight. Second down and eight after the two yard pickup. Brings up second down and eight for the Rams. Ashland and Madison, that might be the last play yeah, the, of the first half, Tony. Yeah, the game clock uh, shows 15. Uh, yeah, they're not going to have to get another snap off. Play clock, more on it than the game clock. 
So the arrows and rams here as we head into the half, Tony, seven apiece. And I'm not surprised because this Ram squad has some talent and some ability. They're just not very deep. They've hung with some teams so far in those three losses, but they just haven't been able to come out and play a good second half. Yeah, you know, not having seen them on film yet, I would say that was probably a, a good half for the Rams. You know, uh, the one close game that they did have, it was 7-14 to 14 was the final. Um, they're going to go in, get some Gatorade, get some rest, probably say, hey, we're in this thing. Uh, no qualms about it. You know, it wasn't like there was a bad turnover or they fumbled three times and that's why in it. The Madison Rams kids got to be feeling pretty good. About, right. Hey, we had one win last year. You go back to 19, we were winless. It would be great on week four to get a win against Ashland. Well, they know coming in that Ashland's a little bit down this year as compared to the last few years. And you, you look at even just record-wise, they say, these, these are these are kids, right? They look and they say, oh, arrows are one and four. We got a chance to go in and beat them on their home turf. And so far tonight, they definitely believe. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they're, they're doing a good job. You know, we're going to take a listen to the Rams uh, halftime show here. Take a listen to the arrows halftime show. We'll be back with some stats and some numbers. Uh, and more importantly, third and fourth quarter. Back with more all square here at the half on iHeartRadio. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Lender, craftsman, dog dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more.
Ashland High School Community Stadium. Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne, the Arrows and Rams in a struggle seven apiece here tonight as both offenses struggle a little bit. Good defense also though, but the Arrows and Rams Tony, you've seen the Arrows tonight come out and uh, do some things well, but the Rams have really picked up their game, and we've seen this, like I said earlier, they've played well for a half against a lot of teams so far this year. Yeah, Madison's doing a good job. You know, they started on their first possession, uh, scored with 6.16 to go on a four-yard touchdown run. Ashland responded, you know, scoring on that big fourth down conversion for 28 yards. You know, total yards, though, Ashland's up just a little bit, uh, clearly moving the ball better, passing than rushing. Uh, Ashland, you know, 79 yards passing to just 40 uh, penalties. You know, Madison uh, has six for 40 yards, a lot of those just on the defense jumping. Uh, one big turnover by the Rams. Um, you know, on the goal line, but really dodged a bullet. You know, Ashland got the ball back without uh, under two minutes to go in the second quarter. Really thought they were going to punch it in to go up more than 7-7 and change the scoreboard. Uh, ran Isaac Group out there for that field goal. Bad snap. Hold kind of got away from him and Hyder, you know, try, doing the best he could to try to get in, just couldn't make it happen. So, yeah, not a lot of offense for either team. Um, both teams kind of stick into their bread and butter, though. The Rams trying to run the ball 47 yards uh, passing to 45 yards rushing. A lot more passing than, than we thought we would see from the Rams um, because of the soft defense, you know, that, that Ashland's been giving them. So I'll be interested to see uh, if uh, – Ashland comes out with a little bit more pressure. We've seen a lot of pressure up front from the Madison Rams against that Ashland Arrows offensive line that's been banged up, you know, week after week, uh, you know, missing two or three starters. Um, we saw Seth Wills go down a little bit. And hopefully he's back in, for the second half. But, yeah, 7-7, seven, seven, not the game that uh, Ashland would want uh, at this point as we get ready for the third quarter to start exactly the game the, the Madison Rams were hoping for. Hey, you can find all the scores from football Friday night on the North Central State College scoreboard at our website wncoam.com brought to you by North Central State College. NC State can change your life and prepare you to change the world. Welcome in everybody to our good friends over at the OH Report. Glad to be here tonight on iHeartRadio as well. Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne. Speaking of halftime scores and a look at the scoreboard from around the region before we show you the stats let me just give you a quick rundown shelby 17 to 6 over harding at the half clear fork and galleon in a close one galleon up 21 to 20. west holmes up 24 to 16 on worcester at the half mansfield senior in the game we previewed earlier 15 to nothing as they get ready to start the second half over lexington tony we'll talk about that one after we go through the scores and the stats, River Valley up 28 to 14 on, on Ontario, and Lucas down six to nothing, but they are playing a powerhouse. Can Central Catholic, that's late in the third quarter. Let's take a look at our stats and give you a rundown here. Some of our numbers, uh, you know, first downs and uh, total yards, pass yards, some interesting numbers here today. Yeah, McFrederick, you know, uh passing for Ashland, 8 for 13 for 79 yards. He's taking care of the ball, though. You know, no interceptions. Got that one big touchdown uh, to Johnny Metzger. Metzger, three receptions for 44 yards. Uh, completions also to Colton Johnson. Uh, Grayson Sturry spots having a good game. Uh, grabbed a, a fumble from uh, Landon McFrederick and uh, was fortunate that Ashland did get that turned over. Um, Caden Spots doing the load of the running for Ashland. Seven carries for 40 yards. Uh, Landon's rushed for eight times. Uh, some positives, some negatives. Uh, for the game, for the half so far, just sitting at one yard. Um, Hyder got one yard on that botched snap, um, trying to get into the end zone. So, again, not a lot of numbers for Ashland Arrows offensively. No, and you know, I think the thing that stands out to me, the Arrows didn't have any turnovers, but Ma Mansfield, or, you know, Madison, Mansfield Madison did, but, and it gave the Arrows great field position, but then they, they couldn't convert on, on the points off. Yeah, once you're inside your own 15 on a turnover, you really think momentum's really on your side. You just do what, what you need to do to get 15 yards. Madison did a great job stopping a run, uh, made Ashland throw it out of bounds one time. Landon just decided to, to get rid of it. Um, one more rush that didn't get any, any yards. And then on fourth down, again, bad snap. Um, doing the best with the hold and just couldn't make it turn into points. So, yeah, one turnover, but really when you don't score off it, it kind of negates the turnover. 
Arrows and Rams getting ready to get back underway here in the third quarter on a beautiful night for high school football. Friday night football in Ohio is sort of like a religion, Tony. <laughs> folks around here have come out in droves to watch this game, and there's a lot of folks at home listening and watching, and uh, we're just happy to be bringing you some normalcy on a Friday night outside, and the Arrows with a tough first half against the Rams. The Arrows coming off that win last week, 35-17 to on the road, Tony, with an opportunity and a big one and really a must win as they head into a, a, an even meatier part of the OCC. They've got Mansfield Senior, Lexington, Worcester, and West Holmes. Yeah, you know, the, f the first four games for Ashland, the non-conference games, similar to the other OCC teams, uh, just kind of like getting into the season, which is kind of fun. Ashland really has the nice draw this year to, to go down to you know, beat the Yellow Jackets last week, come, in, come back home. What you should do is beat the Rams and then prepare you know, for the for the middle of the season, you know, with uh, the, the T.Y. Tigers. But unfortunately, you know, Ashland just doesn't quite have that powerhouse that they've had in years past. You know, the, the offensive line um, we were worried about at the start of the season. We talked about this probably isn't a, a rebuild season, nor is it a reload season. But that offensive line looks a little bit more like it's a rebuild season, both because of injuries and just because of lack of size and experience. So. They're going to have to find something tonight to get a win against these Rams and then go back on Saturday, look at some film, both of this game and what the Tigers are doing against Lexington and try to come up with a game plan. But the key right now is get the ball. Ashland's going to get the ball here to start the, the second half, uh, go down and get some points. Another score from the region and uh, Hillsdale with Ethan Goodwin, a 16-yard touchdown run, and the Falcons go up 14 to nothing over Chippewa. Ten and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, thanks to our friend Chris Snow, the Times-Gazette, for that update. The Arrows and Rams getting ready out there here in the warm-ups here at the half. McFrederick and company with will get the ball back here. We'll get the ball, I should say, to start the second half as they booted it away to start the ball game. Just about to get underway here. A beautiful night. This portion of Arrow football on WNCO is brought to you by America's Home Place. Custom Home Builders at Township Road 405 and Route 30 in Jeromesville. Build a better future at americashomeplace.com. Crestview's got another big game here tomorrow night, right? Saturday night? They sure do, as they're building their new facility over there, new, new field being installed and all that. They're uh, quite a juggernaut this season, Tony. One of the best teams in the state. We may end up doing some of their playoff games down the road and look forward to hopefully getting a couple of their ball games in. Yeah, they've just been on a tear. You know, uh, last week was the first week that they didn't play a team that was undefeated, you know, 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, 4-0. You know, got a little bit of a break against Monroeville. And, yeah, they'll come in uh, tomorrow night here to Ashland Stadium against Ottawa Hills at 4-1. and one. So another fun night of football on Saturday night if you're free. The Arrows in the all orange today, tonight rather, I should say, and uh, Madison in the white with green trim. Arrows will be back to return. Arrows going left to right. Tony Van Dyne and Brandon Wells here bringing you the action. Week six, had to do the math because the Arrows are one and four. So week six for the Arrows, but on the other side, it's week four. I saw on the top of my spotting sheet like, oh, they're 0-3. So it's week four for the Rams. They had a couple of games canceled due to COVID issues going on in the school. And here we are. Narrows will have one man deep. Hasse is deep, standing at his own 17. Now the arrows kind of drop back, and Travis Jamison to boot it away from the Rams 40. The second half is underway here at Community Stadium. It's a squib kick up on the left side, grabbed at the 25, out to the 30, and immediately hit hard at the 33, maybe the 34 yard line. That's Trey Boyd on the short return, and the Arrows will have it first and 10 at the 34-yard line. What kind of adjustments do you expect to see offensively for the Arrows here, Tony? Yeah, I think they're going to continue to try to be consistent running the ball, but, you know, they're going to have to find a way to, to get some open receivers. You know, through the first five games, Ashland's found, found ways through go routes, through seam routes, through little hitches, quick hitting things to find some open receivers when Landon has had time in the pocket uh, and Mansfield uh, 
excuse me, Madison Rams just haven't given him time to, to find those receivers yet. Hand off to Spots, cuts through the right side, 40, 45, first down, arrows, and a 11 yard pickup on first down. Spots quick on the cut, just goes right up the middle. And a nice gain there to start the second half. Isaac Brooks in on the tackle, along with Peyton Myers. Looks like Demarion Dennison's back in there at left tackle too. So that offensive line, a little bit back, not to full strength with, with Hensel still out, but a little bit more of their starters back in to start the third. And a whistle before the snap, and I think the arrows might have been going forward at the snap on first down and 10 at the 45 in their own territory. Going to go the wrong direction here. False start. So. Five yards in the opposite direction. First and 15. Just underway here in the second half. Rams have just been playing an aggressive style of defense. You know, they come out with those three down the linemen. Uh, you know, their quarterback, you know, kind of sitting in that middle linebacker spot. You know, he leads the team in tackles. But a lot of their DBs are just man-to-man. -man. Look at this. No one deep. No one outside of the box, really. Single coverage. It's a little screen on the left side to Spots, who grabs it at the 38, 40, 45, 50, into Rams territory, 45, and he is finally brought down at the 42-yard line by Phil Stupkep. Great run after the catch by Caden Spots. Yeah, nice design screenplay, taking advantage of the Madison pressure, let that pressure go through, let spots kind of run to the middle, get your offensive lineman downfield just a bit. So that five-yard uh, penalty setting up first and 15 negated with a nice 18-yard catch and run. Seth Shoemaker with a nice block downfield. Back to pass, McFrederick throws it to Hasse in the near side, caught at the 46. He's inside the 40 and near the 35 before he is pushed out of bounds by several defenders, including Caden Clapper for the Rams. That's going to be another eight-yard catch there for Hasse. Hasse showing that athleticism out of the backfield. Second down and a long, or a short three, I should say, for the Arrows, who quickly get up to the line of scrimmage. Trips left, twins to the near side. The Arrows haven't been able to strike anything deep except on one fourth down play for the touchdown. Screen to the near side, Metzger, and he is immediately wrapped up and knocked out of bounds. Short loss. Noah Finley in on the coverage and the tackle. Metzger can't break free, and that'll be a loss. It'll be third down and five, four-ish, maybe somewhere in that four to five range. Yeah, it's just Landon firing it out there to Metzger, trying to take advantage of a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Good job by number four there for the Rams. Noah Finley to bring him down. Frederick in the shotgun. He's got trips left. Spots in the backfield with him. And Metzger near side, single coverage against Finley. You're right, everybody up in the box, nobody deep. The middle of that field is wide open. The problem is Ashland can't block the front rams long enough to get anyone into that middle of the field. McFrederick looking down there the middle. Is. The Metzger caught on the 21, inside the 10, the five. He gets away from Finley. Touchdown, Metzger. 37-yard touchdown pass. Metzger and McFrederick, the M&M boys. 13-7 arrows. It's homecoming here at Community Stadium. And the arrows get it all the way home to the end zone. Roop will come on for the extra point. Hyder's the holder. Luke Bryant, long snapper, had a tough one on his last one. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it is good. 14-7, arrows strike first early here in the second half. Back with more on iHeartRadio. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Lender, craftsman, dog dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more.
17-7. Helps when you turn your mic on. 10.09 to go in the third quarter. Arrows have taken the lead here, Tony. A nice play there from McFrederick to Metzger. Yeah, finally got a, got Metzger in, into the middle of the field, what we were talking about. Just a little skinny post pattern. Uh, more importantly, you know, fighting Finley off. You know, could have gotten brought down maybe for a 15, 20-yard gain, which still would have been a good good gain uh but good job by metzger using that weight room time fighting them off with one hand getting into the end zone uh to not just get a first down but get points on the board spots will come out and put it deep brooks from the 5 10 20 25 30 trouble he hurdles a man one man to beat and spots slows him down and colin Rohr comes in and tackles him at the 49 a 44 yard return for isaac brooks Caden spots the deep man after the kick. I'm surprised they're kicking it deep to Isaac Brooks. Yeah, you think he might be a hurdler oh after watching that play? Goodness gracious. Hurdled one of the arrows down on the field. What a return. Yeah, Isaac Brooks uh, hit Ashland in the first half for a 75-yard kickoff return, that time going for another 40. So they may want to talk on the sideline, Ashland Arrows special teams uh, coaching staff to say, hey, what are we going to do next time we score? Because I don't want to see number three running the ball back one more time. Brooks hurdled two players, one arrow defender and one Ram who had blocked it. Handoff up the middle. That's Lucas Warren, and he gets inside Arrows territory for a gain of two. Lucas Under Warren 10 minutes carry. to go. In the third quarter, Arrows up 14-7 and an important drive here for the Rams, Tony. Yeah, the Rams found a lot of success, you know, first time uh, in the first quarter on their very first drive running the ball. That's their, you know, kind of their DNA. That's what they want to do. They ended up coming out, taking advantage of Ashland's soft defensive coverage on the outside, throwing the ball a lot more than they typically do. But, yeah, what they want to do is run up the middle three and four yards at a time. You know, Lucas Warren, 13 carries, only 44 yards. So, really, Ashland's not had trouble stopping the run. It's really the pass off the run where the Rams have been getting first downs off of. Warren and Brooks in the backfield. It's a pitch to Brooks. He's trying to get outside. He stiff arms Metzger, but Metzger says, no, sir, I got this. And he wraps him up the line of scrimmage for no gain. Yeah, third time they've tried to go to Isaac Brooks on some sort of trick play. You know, first time went for five. Second time we pulled him down for a six-yard loss, and that one just goes for one. So they're going to continue to try to find creative ways to get number three, Isaac Brooks, the ball. Uh, but good job by Johnny Metzger, knowing that that's the plan for the Rams and attacking him one more time. Shoemaker, Briggs, and Bartholomew right now in on the defensive line for the Arrows. Hasse in there kind of off to the side as the outside backer. Grissinger in the middle. Under center is oh, the Rams. Out. Blitz off the edge, and that's Hasse. Comes untouched for the sack in the backfield. Brian Hasse comes around the edge and wraps up Hunter Hutchison for the sack. Yeah, I think Hunter Hutchison was actually probably beneficially surprised by it. You know, that could have been a lot bigger of a hit than what it turned out to be. But good job by Hasse getting his first sack for the season. The punt team comes out. Lucas Warren will boot it away, I believe. Yep. Warren comes out to boot it away. Jack of all trades. Standing at his own 35. Metzger's deep at the Arrows 10. Kick is away. Gonna come up and try to grab it. He grabs it at the 15. 20. Cuts it back towards the middle. Now back to the outside. And not much there. Goes out of bounds. And the Arrows will take over at the 26 yard line. Well, the defense bends but doesn't break there. Most of that yardage, obviously, on the long return by Isaac Brooks. Ashland comes back out after their first drive in the third quarter, going four for four, passing uh, an 11 yard rush. So clearly wanting to throw the ball, you know, coming back out into this third quarter, going four for four, uh, completions of 18, 8, and 37. So not just throwing little uh, slant routes and hook routes, but trying to push the ball down the field, um, taking advantage of some big holes that the Rams are giving up if they have the time to get them down there. Posse and spots in the backfield with Big Frederick. Hand off to Spots. He cuts back to the middle, and he's hit at the line and falls forward for a couple of yards before Hunter Hutchison trips him up for the tackle. Hutchison, leading tackler today for the Rams. Tackle number eight. Yeah, he's been leading the Rams all season, uh, averaging 11 uh, tackles per game. So not surprised to see him already you know, nearing double digits here as we get into the middle of the third quarter. Landon McFrederick in the shotgun. Spots comes over and stands next to him. Single receiver to the far side. Hasse in the slot, two receivers to the near side. Now Spots goes back out to the left side. Second down and eight. 
The Arrows own 28 yard line, under seven minutes to go in a third. Handoff, that's Hasse. Hasse goes up the middle and he is brought down. Well, still going, legs still going. And a late flag comes in. The ball got loose, but he was already down before that happened. And it was Will Keppel, the sophomore linebacker in on the tackle. We'll see what the flag is. Yeah, a little gain of three right up the middle, but pending some penalty. Let's see what the call is as the Arrows and Rams square off here. You called it. Personal face foul face mask. I'm not sure. I think it's on the Rams. Looks like, yep, they're going to be, it's going to be 15 yards. So that'll be a first down. Arrows, the benefactor of that one. Another penalty on the Rams here. So they're starting to rack up some penalty yardage. 6.46 to go in the third quarter. The penalty will move the ball up. Frederick in the shotgun. Ball Pen now at the 48. Penalty number seven on Madison Rams for 55 yards for the game. Man in motion is Sturry. Handoff to Spots. Spots met at the line and falls forward for a yard, yard and a half. Second down and long coming up after the Spots run. Hunter Hutchison on the stop along Spots with last week had a good one. Devin Davis. Yeah. Tonight been an, a little bit held in check. Yeah, Spots was able to go, I think, for like 127, Seven. something like that. Uh, first time over 100 yards, so he's running hard again, you know, and he's uh, sitting at 57 yards on 11 carries, uh, still within striking distance of hitting 100 if he continues running hard. Right about his average, which is right around five per carry. McFrederick alone in the backfield, throws it out on the left side to Spots, caught at the 49, he gets into Rams territory near the first down marker before three different Rams it took to get him out of there, including Hutchison and Peyton Myers, and I think Keppel. That marker keeps creeping forward. It looks like a pickup of six to set up third and two. Third and short, yep, third down and two. Arrows quickly to the line of scrimmage at the Rams 44. Frederick in the shotgun once again. Play action, throws it to the near side. Hasse, nice hands, catches the ball over his head. Good Pushes fight. his way forward. Good fight indeed. Picks up the arrows first down at the Rams 40 yard line. Brian Hasse has worked himself back into the rotation here and doing some business out here on the offensive side and the defensive side with a big sack as well. Yeah, and they're finding some success with, you know, swinging a running back out to the flats and throwing quickly to it and letting those wide receivers become blockers. Uh, they're going to have too many men on the field, I think, the Rams. Waiting to see a flag throw deep. Looking for Metzger inside the 10. Incomplete. Metzger might be hurt. Well, Brooks, the, Brooks in on the coverage. The officials completely blew the call. Number 68 running off the field. You know, there's 11 Rams currently on the field. He was number 12. He wasn't even to the hash when that ball was snapped. <laughs> Everybody so. else in the stadium saw it, Tony. I don't know how they didn't see that. Metzger comes off holding his left arm, and he's going to have to check out, I think, for the first time tonight. Maybe for the first time all season <laughs> from an offensive set. Yeah, he's kind of crouching down. He got dinged pretty good. Brooks again with Myers, or I should say Noah Finley came in on the coverage. Brooks from the safety position, and uh, they all collided, and I think Metzger took the worst of that. Yeah, everyone kind of became a defensive back at that point, just wanting the other team not to catch it, so. Hard count, and I think McFrederick might have got one of his own guys on that one on second down and 10. The arrows are pushing it back five yards. Metzger's going to check back in, though. <laughs> Does that, that count quick. as a play? Yeah, well. Does, it, does a penalty count as a play? <laughs> you know, it was a quick sub there for the arrows. Second down and 15 for the arrows. Second and 15. 14 to 7 arrows on top. 5.43 to go in the third quarter. I think if I were coach, I would try to get Colton Johnson just on the go route here. In the shotgun, McFrederick, Hasse in motion. Play action, swing pass to Spots, who dropped it, grabs it again at the 48 in his own territory. Now he's going to try to get away from a couple defenders, back into Rams territory, and he gets back some positive yardage, and that was quite a play there for Spots to even just get himself back to the line of scrimmage. Caden Spots. Gets back to the 41, gain of four on what could have been about an eight-yard loss. 
Yeah, you, it almost looked like a sideways pass, which you know kind of puts you in no, man, no man's land, not knowing if it's going to be an incomplete pass or a fumble. So good job by Spots picking it up, turning what would have been probably a five-yard loss into about a four-yard gain. Arrows will split two out wide left and two out to the near side. Back to pass. McFrederick pushed out of the pocket. Pocket, he rolls left, looking. Now he's going to come back to his right, just heaves it up downfield. Incomplete inside the 20. He spots, I guess, the intended receiver, more of a throwaway than anything. Fourth down and 11 for the Arrows, and I see Luke Bryant coming in, most likely to be long snapping it, and the Arrows will probably punt it away. Yeah, on that third and 11, I think that was the first time the Rams have actually dropped into coverage and not brought pressure. Uh, may have thrown Luke off a little bit to say, hey, I, I've been expecting man-to-man -man with pressure in my face. At Landon. You mean. Landon, yep. sorry. Uh, yeah, and then all of a sudden, no pressure comes, and there's eight guys dropping, uh, probably doing the right thing, just throwing it away. Well, Landon will go in there deep to boot it away, and Isaac Brooks, the dangerous return man, standing at his own tent. Punt is away. McFrederick punts it deep. Brooks is going to grab it at the 8. He fumbles it, falls on it, and they will escape a near disaster. Yeah, fair catching on the 7-yard line is already probably not advised uh, for a high school kid to do. Uh, goes off his hands. He fortunately able just to fall on it. So unforced fumble, but was able to recover his own mistake. Well, the Rams hanging around here tonight, Tony. They come in. Without a win, we talked about it. This is a game that is a, a dangerous one for the Arrows because the Rams look at it and say, this might be our only chance to get a win this season, just looking at the records. Yeah, and, and looking at the roster, you know, like not a lot of leadership coming back last year, you know, that this Ashland Arrows team graduated some phenomenal offensive linemen, some special, you know, quarterback, a, a wide receiver. So knowing that those guys are gone, opportunity. And off to Warren, who rumbles his way forward on first down. Gets close to the first down marker. I think he's just a little short. Be second down and inches at the 17. Briggs, Shoemaker, and Bartholomew in there. They are going to measure. I think you're right. Well, they're going to come together and talk at a minimum. I'm not sure why you would bring it in to measure it on second and inches. Either give it to him or move it back six inches and let him get it. But I don't know. Well, the umpire is eyeballing it from the left hash to the right. First down. Well, you don't see that very often. First down. They did not bring out the chains, just to be clear. The he umpire went off to the side and just sort of side-eyed it and looked and said, well, that looks like a first down. I, 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 I do reckon. <laughs> so here we go. First and 10 at the road 17. I reckon they're going to hand this off to Warren as well. Hutchison under center. They've done it 14 times already this game for 54 yards, so good opportunity to do it one more time. Hand off. Nope. The play action gives it to Brooks. It goes end around on the right side, Isaac and Brooks he picks up carry. seven or eight on first down. Isaac Brooks, such a quick first step. He gets the ball. He is dangerous and a threat to score every time. Yeah, it doesn't run with kind of the power that we saw, you know, up at Perkins, you know, with that running back, but definitely runs long strided. He's going to cover a lot of space and very explosive. So he's not going to take a lot of time to accelerate once he gets his hands on the ball. Good rush for eight yards there. Speaking of Colin Nemitz up there, Perkins, who went for 402 against us a couple weeks ago. Thanks, under center. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> Second two. Hutchison hands it off to Warren. Warren met immediately at the line, but then pushes his way forward. He's going to be really close to the first down. We'll see where they mark it. Yeah, maybe a favorable spot there, but they're going to give him one, bringing up third and just inches. Unless the umpire decides to eyeball this one, too. He's coming up to take a look. I reckon this one's close, too. He's doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, he's, he's turning. He's, he's thinking about it. He's no, going to measure gonna, it. Now he's, he's going to call for the chains, Tony. You're listening to the Firelands Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week. The Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340. Powered by Firelands Electric Cooperative, your local touchstone energy cooperative. Never a dull moment 
in the world of high school sports. I will say this, I'm just thankful we have officials because there have been games being canceled, not football varsity games, but on some of the lower levels for lack of officials in multiple sports. So if you're looking to make some extra money, you can go check out OHSAA.org and figure out <laughs> a way to make some money and be an official and be part of the game again in all of the sports whether it's in the fall, winter, or spring, good way to make some extra money and impact young people in a positive manner. Yeah, such a great service and opportunity to do good in the community. But unfortunately, what you get is fans that chase you, yell at you, spit at you, uh, unappreciative teams. So, yeah, take, take a check if you're interested. Third down keeper by Hutchison, and I think he's going to go right up the middle, and I think he's going to have the first down. As they did say, he was just short on second down. This is third Hutchison down in inches, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be enough for a first down. Yeah, it's a hard one to see, you know, just a big group of bodies. Hutchinson just kind of jumps in the middle of it, kind of falls forward. So looks like where they marked it, he's going to pick up the first down. Yeah, the chains are moving as we approach the three-minute mark in the third quarter. Brandon Wells, Tony Van Dyne here on iHeartRadio, Fox Sports 1340 WNCO as well. As over on the OH report, you can find that on YouTube and Facebook as well. Mr. Skaronski and company. And the shotgun. Nope, I'm sorry. In the under center, little pitch. Oh. That's Brooks who catches it, makes Boyd miss, and he's got himself another first down onto the 40. Hutchison who went under center and immediately went with a little pitch to Brooks, and boy, is he quick. Yeah, good job by Trey Boyd. Just forced him to come back inside and get some help from Caden Schmitz. Um, could have been much worse. Still pick up a 14, but yeah, good job by Trey setting that edge and hey, I don't want you to go any more outside towards the sideline. You're going to have to come back inside uh, where your teammates are so you can get some help. So a little bit of life, though, here for the Madison Rams now under 240 in the third quarter. Schmitz with a nice angle to make that tackle. Hutchison under center once again. Hand off right up the middle. Lucas Warren met immediately in the backfield, but then gets away from it as Shoemaker couldn't wrap him up, and he gets out to the 44 yard line gain of three. Second down and seven coming up for this Rams offense who's trying to methodically get down the field like they did to start the ball game with their only score so far tonight. Three-yard gain on the play. Yeah, a little less down. passing than we saw in that first drive. Uh, a little bit more commitment to to running up the middle, but we are seeing a little bit more new nuances off that quick pitches, you know, to, to Brooks trying to get to the corner. So they've got a deeper playbook than what they've showed uh, through the quarters one and two. Well, just an under center again. Two running backs. It's a pitch or a handoff rather on the end around to Brooks. Brooks out to the 45 and now out to the 49-yard line. He'll be short of the first down. A late flag comes flying in, and it might have been a late hit or some talking going on out there. It was a five-yard pickup and was going to be third down and two from their own 49. Not sure who the guilty party will be, if it's the Arrows or the Rams or offsetting. The refs love to call offsetting in these situations. That's often what happens. We'll see if we can get a, a voice here on the call from the officials. Looks like the Arrows are backing up. Well, I think it's a hit to the head. Didn't get a number, obviously. Refs Mike not working once again here tonight at Community Stadium, but that's a big penalty, Tony. was going to be second down and two, and it puts the Rams a lot deeper inside Arrows territory at the 36. Yeah, it turns a five-yard gain into a 15-yard gain. Ashland's third penalty for this quarter, so time to clean things up for Ashland, tighten up here now that they're, uh, Madison's on their side of the football field. Hand off to Brooks, ball's loose, ball's loose. A lot of orange. Arrows football. Looks like Braylon Hyder was able to come up with the loose ball. A little bit of an exchange issue there, obviously between Hutchison and Brooks, who has spent more time split wide, but this week, he handed it, well, it looked like big number 77, Logan Bartholomew met Brooks before he even had the handoff in the backfield, Tony. Yeah, you call that kind of the mesh point where the, the quarterback's handing it off either to a running back or a wide receiver, and it's the perfect time to make something happen because no one's really in control of the ball. Everyone kind of like tightens down at the same time, ball squirts out, and at that point, you know, 22 guys on the field are going after it. Good job by Hyder jumping on it, giving Ashland some new life with under 130 to go in the third quarter. You know, that doesn't get the arrows inside the red zone, but we're going to say, hey, 
When they do, it will be the Shakely Mechanical Red Zone. Things are warming up at Shakely Mechanical Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling in Ashland. McFrederick back to pass, a double Story. pass, throws it to Hasse, looking downfield. Story tips it to himself. He grabs it. He's inside the 20. And now the Rams stand him up, and he gets pushed down inside the 20, inside the 15. 50-yard reception. Grayson Story says, I'm just going to tip this up to myself. What a play. McFrederick to Hasse to Story. Yeah, Isaac Brooks, number three from Madison, got a hand on a ball. Good job by Sturry, just keeping concentration, bringing it down. And then as the Madison Rams are just trying to fight for it and strip for it, just keep driving forward. Two more, three more, four more yards. So Sturry scored on uh, week two, I think, from that play deep in the fourth quarter. So I mentioned it on the last drive. You know, we've been swinging this, wide re this running back out to the wide receivers blocking. All you have to do, though, is make sure that it's a backwards pass, and all of a sudden it's a lateral, which allows them to throw it one more time. McFrederick looking to throw for the end zone. Spots, touchdown arrows. Well, two plays and the arrows just go crazy with a big touchdown here. Caden Spots showing his athleticism in the end zone, getting himself up off the ground. And the arrows with a big touchdown here stretch the lead out to 20 to seven. Yeah, two plays go for 65 yards you know the spots to story pass 50 yards and then from McFrederick to spots for 15 so you throw for 50 of it you catch for the other 15 not a bad drive for spots pretty Welsh and the boys on the bench giving everybody high fives arrows on homecoming night trying to pull out a big victory here for their second in a row high snap and whistle and a flag before the kick was even out false start on the arrows on the extra point that takes a little bit of the air out, but still have an opportunity, albeit five yards deeper, to kick the extra point. Yeah, Shakela Mechanical has been such a great sponsor for us, you know, with the red zone. Uh, unfortunately, the arrows like to score from 25 or more out. You know, we, we haven't had a lot of success once we get into the Shakela Mechanical red zone, actually getting points on the board. Uh, we do a lot better from 25 and 30 yards out, uh, throwing usually from McFrederick to Spots or to Story or to, you know, uh, Metzger. To, to yeah. Metzger, yeah. yeah. To, to any of the many receivers we got out there. Good snap, good hold. It's blocked. blocked and grabbed at the line, and it is a dead ball. We'll keep it here, 20 to 7. The arrows, well, again, a little bit of the air gets kicked out after you miss an extra point. You get a penalty on the extra point, and then you get it blocked. It was a low kick. Good block there at the line of scrimmage by the Rams defensive line. 44 seconds to go in the third. Did you double check the rule on that? So a blocked kick, punt or field goal, can't be advanced once it passes the line of scrimmage. Was that the thing we figured out last week? Yes. Okay, so that one was a blocked kick, so the offense cannot advance it. Unless it stays behind the line of scrimmage, right? That one was pretty that was close. really close. But they blew the whistle, and we'll say the refs are always right, so. We're just glad to have officials here tonight, my friend. Two, three. Hey, the, big, big turnover, though. Big turnover. Hyder jumps on the ball. Uh, we saw the Rams seeing some success running the ball, uh, trying to go, come down to, to, to tie it up, really, you know, trying to go 14-14. And then three plays later, a fumble, 50-yard pass, 15-yard. Now you're down by 13. Well, and realistically, Tony, I, you know, if the Arrows had been able to punch it in there at the end of the half, I mean, this we could be a big... Uh, after the turnover by Madison, we just weren't able to score. And we talked a, a little bit about that, you know, last week at Mount Vernon, you know, against the Yellow Jackets, that the score, you know, 35-13, remind me. 35-17. Uh, 35-17. Really much more dominant win for the Arrows than what that score showed. Right. We had two opportunities to punch it in, just weren't able to. Uh, so Ashland still got the W. Looks like we're doing pretty good tonight. You know, one more quarter to go. We got 44 seconds still in the third quarter. But, yeah. It'd be great to finish strong, finish with some enthusiasm, finish with some more points, to be honest. Uh, because you're going to go into, Mad uh, into Mansfield Senior next week against a defense that is playing pretty well, at least through the first half, against Lexington tonight. Arrows will boot it away from their own 40. 44 seconds remaining here in the third quarter against the Madison Rams. Rams coming in 0-3, Arrows 1-4 off last week's aforementioned big win at Mount Vernon. And the Isaac Root booting it away this time. Kicks it short. Up comes Tepple. Not going to grab it. Ball loose, and it looks like 
Stupka's just going to come up and fall on it at the 26-yard line in their own territory. Mansfield senior update, 23-0 against Lexington now in the third quarter. So, again, that Mansfield Tigers team not giving up points. Uh, it'd be great to work on not just your defense here for the Arrows, but get the ball back and find some more ways to score, not only for tonight and for next week, but as you progress through the season. You can find all those scores from Football Friday Night on the North Central State College scoreboard at our website, wncoam.com, brought to you by North Central State College. NC State can change your life and prepare you to change the world. First and 10 at the 26. It's a little screen out to Brooks and he's wrapped up through a loss of one. Good job by Trey Boyd, again, just attacking that play, not letting him get a full head of speed and make a move. Once you see that ball you know, going out to your receiver, you put a foot in the ground and drive forward. So good job. Uh, actually, a loss of one on the play. Might be the last play of the quarter. We'll see if Madison elects to just run it out. Hutchison looking over to the sideline. Coach Stupka and company on the sideline. You think down two scores, you might want to take advantage of every second. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, at some point, you need to get a little sense of urgency. Uh, the Rams, you know, sitting here with seven points, exactly where they've been, you know, six points in game one, seven and seven in games two and three. Now in game four with seven points, they're not used to scoring a lot of points, just seven a game. They're down, down 13. They need at least two in the fourth quarter. End of the third, 20 to seven arrows. Back with more on iHeartRadio. Radio. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Listening to the Firelands Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week. The Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340. Powered by Firelands Electric Cooperative, your local touchstone energy cooperative. Second down and 11 as we get underway in the fourth quarter. It's a handoff to Lucas Warren, who goes over to the right side out to the 25, or back to the 25. No gain. Shoemaker in on the tackle for the Arrows. Yeah, good stop for no gain there. Sets up third and 11. A, a down and distance that the Rams are not comfortable with uh, for their style of offense. Only one pass so far in the second half, as you mentioned, Tony. 20-7 to seven Arrows on top as we're underway in the fourth quarter here at Community Stadium. Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne on iHeartRadio, as well as over on the OH Report. And a little surprise, you know, with just one one pass in the second half. They went eight for ten, you know, through the first uh, first two quarters. So had something going on, but obviously abandoned it for the run here recently. Well, now they're going to pass. He's looking deep. Launches it downfield. That's going to be picked off in the Arrows territory at the 40. Colin Rohr has it, and he is wrapped up right away. That's Trey Boyd. So Trey Boyd, not Colin Rohr. My apologies to the Boyd family. <laughs> Grabs at the 40-yard line. And Hunter Hutchison just says, I'm going to launch this up and let my receiver try to run under it down the sideline. He was pressured up the middle and launched it downfield for Clapper, who could not get there. Metzger and Rohr in the area as well, but Trey Boyd out there like a center fielder says, I'll just take this one. Yeah, overthrown by probably seven or eight yards. You know, the only guy that had a shot for it was Trey Boyd. Good job, you know three-step drop seeing that you know your receivers going deep so he just turned and ran deep with him good job probably as good as a punt though for the Rams uh, setting up Ashland on their own 40. Arrows with a 13-point lead 11 minutes to go you see coach Cedar often go for the jugular on this kind of play after a turnover but there's a whistle and a false start on the Arrows offensive line. Triway up 29 to 21 over Loudonville after three quarters. Seventh penalty for Ashland, probably the most they've had all season now for 46 yards in this game. K 
Cherry, how about this score, Tony? 65 to nothing over Bucyrus with 36 seconds left in that one. Let the clock run. Glad we're not calling that one. McFrederick back to pass. He's pressured, rushed, pushed out of the pocket. He's going to tuck it and run, and he's wrapped up in the backfield, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Caden Clapper comes in and makes the tackle on Landon McFrederick. Hops up. Just not enough of a rush for the Rams to be able to find any running lanes. You know, once you get past those first three, you got eight more de defensive guys that, you know, Landon has to try to get by. So got back to the line of scrimmage to set up, you know, second 15. Clock running, 10 and a half minutes to go. Lucas down 15 to nothing, but Canton Central Catholic. McFrederick in the shotgun, man in motion. Colton Johnson coming right to left, now goes back outside. McFrederick, little pump fake, now he's going to throw it deep. Another nope, going to tuck it, pump fake, and runs to the near side. Tries to go down the sideline, and he gets a few yards. And McFrederick wisely tries to, just runs out of bounds after getting back to the original line of scrimmage near the 40-yard line. Third down and long coming up. Fourth quarter score, Worcester takes the lead 30-27 to against West Holmes. Generals with a first and goal from the 10 in that ball game. How's that? Take your one and raise you one. Yeah, I think West Holmes was sitting at 5-0 and and coming into that game, so big OCC matchup there. Worcester and West Holmes not too far away from each other over there. Wayne County and Holmes County. Trips right as we approach the 10-minute mark. Third down and nine for the Arrows. They just scored 37-27. I'll raise you one more <laughs> as Ashland takes a timeout. <laughs> and we'll take one as well. Back with more after this on iHeartRadio. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Lender, Craftsman, Dog Dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Seven arrows on top, big third and nine coming for Ashland at their own 41. 10.08 to go in the fourth. McFrederick back to pass, pushed out of the pocket by Davis, rolls right, throws it downfield, oh. open receiver. There's a flag down on the near side. That's going to be the arrows. Colton Johnson, I think. I'm having a hard time seeing the number on the far side, and he is all the way down to the 10. He goes for 50 yards, oh, it's but it's going to come back. Yep, Braylon Hyder with a big catch and run, but not going to hold up. Yeah, Demarion Dennison standing out there at the 40-yard line, kind of pleading his case, but not going to hear it. Uh, they're going to be walking back for a 10-yard penalty. That will erase what would have been a big play, biggest play of the year for Braylon Hyder, who missed first couple games. First game and a half, I should say. So the Arrows' big play will be negated with 9.53 to go in the fourth quarter. Arrows with how many penalties now? Uh, we're up to eight for 56 yards, so nothing that's kind of like sizable. You know, no personal fouls, no, you know, uh, face masks or late hits or unsportsmanlike Coach Cedar, conduct. Though, will not be happy with eight penalties, though, is my guess. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, you, you turn a third and nine that went for a 50-yard play now into third and 14, so Ashton's still got a big play coming up here. Third down. McFrederick standing at his own 31 in the shotgun. Trips right, single near. Spots in the backfield, loop and out of there. 
looking for him. McFrederick Tucks tries to hurdle a couple of guys down on the field. There's another flag down. McFrederick gets wrapped up at the 38-yard line, but it's going to be a hold on the arrows. They're going to go back another 10 yards, potentially. Or if you're Madison, Tony, do you just take the result because it's fourth and long and the arrows are going to punt it away? I think I'd just take the result at this point. You know, the Rams came out with a nice little twist. Almost comes up like a delayed blitz. You know, your offensive line gets engaged in a block, then all of a sudden a guy comes spinning around, and naturally you just put a hand out there and almost hook him, which ends up being a hold. So, yeah, third and 14 was, you know, when we started the play. Uh, they could take him back uh, and get another 10 yards, but I would think that they would just negate the, the penalty, you set need, up fourth and 14. Yeah, you need the time, right? I mean, you, you, That's you, correct. you definitely need the time on the clock at this point. You're fighting against the clock. Well, we'll see, 940 to go. Yeah, coaches are talking about it. They're looking like they may step it off and just take the 10 yards, which may be the way to go if your offense is struggling against this Arrows defense. Good point. There's uh, pros and cons, right? They're talking about it. The Arrows offense still out there on the field. 9.40 to go. You think uh, it's there? They call it chop block and decline it. Oh, wow. Well, there was multiple flags on the same play, so both multiple officials saw it. The Arrows will send out their punt unit with Isaac Roop. This time, looking to boot it away, a 13 point lead. And anytime you're in special team situations like this, this is an opportunity for for Madison. Yeah, you're at least aware, you know, number three, you know, Brooks is gonna be back there. He's the speedster, already with a 75 yard kickoff return. Didn't go for a touchdown. He came back with another 40, 45 yard kickoff return. So has the ability to break something big here if Isaac Roop gives him the opportunity. Pretty sure I'd just punt this one out of bounds if I can. Roop's done a great job with hang time, you know, so I trust another great one. Beautiful there it kick. Is. Beautiful kick. Brooks going to let it bounce and roll inside the 10, all the way inside the 5. The arrows are, I believe, able to down it at the 1 or the 2. A tremendous punt, 62 yards for Isaac Roop. Yeah, that huddle highlight, you know, get that one out for your D1 recruit because nice, nice punt, not just for distance, but also for time. Uh, and you need to find a balance between the two, especially once you get into the high school range. You know, it's not good enough just to, to boom a 40-yard punt that's a line drive because you're going to give a guy an opportunity to return it. And it's not great to have a five-second hang time that goes for 20 yards. So good job by number 13, Isaac Group out there. Boot one, 62 yards, like you said, down to the two-yard line. Opportunity now for, you know, the arrows to even become a little bit more aggressive and make these Rams do something other than just run another QB sneak, which is probably what we'll see here. It's what they did last time when they were pinned back. First down and 10 at the two. Hutchison under center, man in motion. They're going to hand it off to the up back, and he goes forward out past the five. So a couple of yards there for the Rams, a new ball carrier in there for the first time yeah, as far as getting Stevens, the ball. Cameron Harry. Stevens, the sophomore running back, 5'11", 215 Session pounder. He's a load back there, and he gets a couple yards to push them out past the five and they'll mark it at the six. I would guess he's just that specialist when you say oh, we can't go backward. So give it to the big guy, let him lean forward, picks up three. Uh, but now with under eight minutes and 40 seconds, down 13, you need to score twice. You need to find some more sense of urgency if you're cheering for the Rams. We haven't seen Zane win at all. So I think he was in there early, might've gotten hurt. Hand off, nope, keeper rather, I should say. Hutchison goes forward past the 10 near the 12. And I think he's got enough for the first down. That'll move the chains for the Rams. Yeah, Zane Wynn, you know, kind of going, you know, 50-50 carries with Warren, you know, all season. Just one carry early in the game for two yards. And, yeah, really haven't seen a whole lot from him since then. Approaching the eight-minute mark. It'll be Madison first down. 20 to 7. Arrows on top here at homecoming. Community Kobe Stadium, Hutchison under center, line. hands it off, that's Warren, comes out to the near side, he's tripped up at the 15 Louis by Colton Warren Johnson. The carry tackle made by Colton Johnson. Great tackle from Johnson to come in and go low and wrap him up. 18 carries now for Warren, 62 yards. Uh, the best stat, though, you know, only one one rush for 10 yards. Everything else has been under five. So good job by the Arrows defense, you know, really limiting what the Rams wanted to do, which is run the ball consistently. They have had some success, you know, not a lot of negative plays. The Rams have given up 10 sacks on the season, uh, you know, none so far in this game. But, yeah, so far the Arrows are doing what they need to do to keep it close. Rams looking to pass. They're going to launch it downfield. Got a man open at the 45, caught and tripped up. At the 50, maybe inside Arrows territory. Phil Stupka makes the grab. They'll mark it at the 48. It's a 36-yard pickup. 
for Madison first down. So he did a great job. Hutchison looked left for Brooks, and the arrows deep secondary shifted over towards that side, and then they saw Stupka come right down the slot. Sorry, I broke down the analysis for you there, Tony. No, you were accurate. I, I got nothing to say. Did, did over, right on. Hutchison <laughs> under center. First down and 10 in Arrows territory. They're going to pass it again. Throws it left side. Caught at the 42 by Isaac Brooks. Makes a man miss. Makes another man miss. And now he goes down after getting the first down at the 38, maybe the 37. Right in between them. Back-to-back -back first downs for the Rams. 20 to 7, under seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Still just big cushions, you know, for these Rams receivers out wide. You know, if you're watching the OH report, you'll see a big 10 yard cushion, you know, that the RDBs, you know, for the Ashton Arrows are, are really giving up, which allows these quick passes to be caught and gain a five yard. So Ashton's obviously playing a little bit of prevent. We're up 13 with under 630 to go now in the fourth quarter, trying to play a little bit soft. And off to Warren, up the middle. And Hasse brings him down at the 35. Gain of two. Maybe just one. Two-yard gain on the play. Boy, tough spot there. I had him down for three. Yeah. I mean, they marked him back at the 36. It could have been a knee that came down that maybe we didn't see. All be spotted on the Ashland 36-yard line. Spoken like a true gentleman. Six minutes to go in the fourth. Hutchison back to pass, looking, looking. He's going to try to throw it downfield, just launches it up. A lot, a lot of, of flag, contact. A lot of contact, and there's a flag. It's incomplete in the end zone, but the flag thrown at the one-yard line intended for Stupka down there, and that's going to be 15 yards. Otherwise, that might have been a touchdown. The arrows go ahead and grab downfield. A couple of arrows there in the vicinity. Arrows faithful don't like it, but that's definitely the right call, Tony. Yeah, he had a little trailing defender and a defender over the top, and unfortunately, that trailing defender, you know, trying to slow down the receiver, just put an arm up there, gave him a little tug, and once you start to see the hips turn on the receiver, that's kind of the dead giveaway. That like you've actually imposed the receiver's intent to go catch the ball. Um, you can give a little contact, you can kind of bump him a little bit, but once you start to move the body or move the shoulders, you got to see laundry on the field. First and ten, the market at the 21. Hutchison and the Rams on the move, trying to cut it back to a one-score game. Handoff around the left side. Stevens, second carry. He's hit hard and stood up at the 20, maybe the 19. Schmitz in on the tackle for the Arrows. On the carry, Caden Schmitz on the stop. Two-yard gain on the play brings up second down. Second down and, and eight. For the Rams. Ball be Rams. Need to get going. Another slow, methodical drive. Yeah, we're, we're already in, in our fourth minute here of this drive. You know, the Rams still have another 15 yards to go, down by 13. They're going to either have to speed it up or trust that they can get an onside kick and kill the next five minutes uh, to try to either take the lead or tie this up. On to center, Hutchison. Whistle and a... Timeout, Arrows. You're listening to the Firelands Electric Cooperative High School Football Game of the Week. The Ashland Arrows on Fox Sports 1340. Powered by Firelands Electric Cooperative, your local touchstone energy cooperative. Arrow fans remember, November 2nd is election day. 509 to go. Here in the fourth, Arrows down 20 to 7. These are no new taxes for our just a reminder to all you Arrows fans out there, the Ashland City Board of Education has placed a levy renewal on the November ballot. Not a new tax. Used for district-wide operations, utilities, curriculum, and extracurricular programs. A few additional uses of these funds include buying student workbooks and providing specialty programs to meet our, meet our student needs. We appreciate the community re renewing this issue in the past. Promises made, promises kept. Not a new tax. 20 to 7, 509 to go here in the fourth. Rams on the move, Tony, ball at the 19. In the red zone, and hey, guess what? I know it's Madison, but that gets the Rams inside the Shakely Mechanical red zone when things heat up. Keep your cool at Shakely Mechanical plumbing, heating, and cooling in Ashland. Yeah, I'd expect the Rams just continue to run the ball here. They're going to come out and throw it on, on, on second down, but. Hutchison throws it to the near side, and it's caught, but Stupka immediately slips at the 18-yard line. Not much there. Kind of like a run. This is a rollout and a very short pass, Tony. 
Yeah, not a, a really big uh, deep play passing route. You know, they don't have a lot of passing plays, you know, in their offense, clearly. Um, the thing that they want to do is run the ball. So I think we've seen maybe all the passing plays, you know, that, that they have in their playbook. So I think Ashland's getting a little bit more used to, to what to expect. So Rams are going to have to do some work here. Third and six, uh, now with 4.30 to go in the fourth. Third and six. Handoff. Stevens barrels forward inside the 15 and marked down at the 13-yard line. Grissinger in on the tackle with Schmitz. You can hear the coaches beside us wondering why he's running to the sideline. Obviously, this big back, they want him running north and south, uh, bringing up fourth and two. Uh, big play here for the Rams and for the Arrows defense. This is pretty much the ball game, I think, at this point, Tony. Fourth down and two, and the Rams offense looking to the sideline saying, we need a call, and they timeout. burn a timeout. On fourth down two, we'll take one as well. Back with more on iHeartRadio. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. on the move 359 to go in the ball game arrows up 20 to 7. Hutchison under center back to pass throws it out to the left side Warren with a catch gets himself down near the oh, first down marker it. and it is close great tackle by Johnny Metzger coming from that deep safety position to make it close Metzger with a great open field tackle, but a generous spot. We'll see. It's a first down. He eyeballs it and says, yeah, we got this one, I reckon. First and 10. Just outside the 10-yard line, so I think the Rams could theoretically get another first down around the one. Yeah, the story's still, you know, we're now at 350 uh, and no sense of urgency down 13. Uh, Madison's going to have to score here to leave themselves a little bit more time to try to either tie it up or take the lead. Hutchison under center, hand off to Stevens. Stevens goes up forward and he's immediately wrapped up. Shoestring tackle, maybe a loss by Mr. Seth Grissinger. Nice tackle there in the open field. Parker Grissinger, I'm sorry. Parker Grissinger on the stop. They marked the ball with 33 seconds to go on the play clock. I'm curious here how long and how slow that these Rams are getting plays in. 3.20 to go. They're down to two timeouts. Now they get it in. They're going to burn 20 seconds just to get a play call in. Under center. Back to pass. Looking. Throws it out on the left side, and it is dropped. Couldn't haul it in. Phil Stupka, not a great throw, though. I shouldn't necessarily say that that's a drop. It was out in front of him. Yeah, hard catch to make. You know, probably the first out route. You know, similar to, to Ashland Arrows, we talked about this last week. Not a lot of out, route, out routes in high school, because those are hard throws to make, you know, going from either, you know, one hash mark to the other hash mark or all the way out to the, the sidelines. Uh, it gives you more appreciation for how strong quarterbacks' arms actually are uh, at the next level in the NFL. And the shotgun, Hutchison. Nope, not in the shotgun, under center. Sorry, expected it. Looking left, looking, throws it looking in for Isaac Brooks on a slant and throws it incomplete out in front of him. And that'll bring up third down and 10. Well, we had not seen that play yet. That, no, that, that route, anyway. That's just a little quick slant over the middle, you know, trying to get your ball, the ball to your playmaker, Isaac Brooks. You know, even if he would have caught it, probably only a five yard gain. So fourth down and 10. Uh, Ashland's feeling, you know, pretty good, you know, with 10 yards between them and the end zone. Rams need to make something happen. Going to take one more timeout. Probably going to be the last of the, of the game uh, to make sure they have the right play call. We'll keep it here. 
2.59 to go in the fourth quarter, and the Rams calling the timeout. That's their last timeout, right? Last time out of the half, yeah, I, I believe so. I, I think they've taken uh, all three now. Maybe they've got, yeah, I'm not sure. Either way, it will be fourth down and 10 at the 12-yard line after maybe the 11, actually. It's, it says on the board the 12, but it's closer to the 11. And you're at this point kind of have to get into the end zone. And the Arrows try to win their second in a row before they head down to Mansfield Senior next week, which should be an interesting one. Looks like Mansfield Senior is going to pull out a big win tonight. Yeah, 23-14 right now. Mansfield Seniors uh, up on Lexington. Ooh, Lex will come back there. Yeah, Mansfield was pitching a shutout, 23-0, uh, going into the fourth quarter. So giving up a couple of touchdowns, still probably a little bit of time left on the clock there. Uh, but yeah, a big game against Mansfield Senior. Uh, had a great, you know, 2019 campaign. Took it all the way to the the finals. You know, almost won a state championship. Uh, graduated a lot of players. You know, last year then came back with COVID. Didn't have a down year. Uh, they were probably disappointed in, in the outcome, but they got a lot of young kids that got a lot of experience that are playing really well football. So that'll be fun next week, Friday night. Fourth down and ten. We'll have that action for you on Friday night here on iHeart. Under center. Hutchison looking to throw. Lobs it up into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Penalty free. Stupka in the end zone. Incomplete. And there is a flag, Tony, on the far side, I believe, at the 10. Oh, defensive holding. And that is a big oh. one. That's an automatic first down, five yards, right? Yeah, more importantly, automatic first down. So they'll go half the distance to the goal from about the 11-yard line up into the five. But more importantly, Four more downs, four more tries to get into the end zone. How about this, Tony? Worcester 37, West Holmes 34, five minutes and plus to go in the fourth quarter. That's exciting. The Arrows will have both of those squads later on this season. Yeah, those are weeks uh, nine and 10 for us, right? That's how we wrap up the season. West Holmes and then Worcester here at Ashland. For the Rams. Yep, unless we're able to make the playoffs, which we'd have to Probably get four and six, I think, makes you, makes the playoffs this year. I mean, an outside chance at three and seven, but I think four and six is what gets you in. Yeah, it's a bigger playoff field again this year. Last year, you know, the OHS AA went to everyone's in format, you know, with, with all the weird COVID things. They didn't know how many games people were going to go in uh, or get in. Um, for the whole season. So they said, hey, everyone makes the playoff. We'll just seed them. Uh, Ashland had a nice little run in the playoffs. This year, OHS A probably figured out, hey, it was kind of fun to have more guys in the field. So they're going to go to 16. Still fourth down, they're saying. That was not an automatic first down. Wow, fourth down and five. Hutchison under center. Going to keep it on a delay. He's in close he to the goal short. line. And Tony, I think he has the first down. I think he has the first down. Inside he, the one. He's short of the touchdown, but that will be enough to give wow. the Rams a first down. We, I was just saying how almost impossible it would be for the Rams to get a first down without scoring. And they do. First and goal inside the one. And I'll need to double check my uh, you know Ohio football rule book. Is, yeah, defensive holding on all, all uh, other levels is an automatic first down. But Rams come looking for QB sneak here. Hutchison under center. There's Ball a whistle. Start. Definitely a false start. Yeah, Hutchison in the center, not on the same page. That'll push it back. 2.37 to go in the fourth quarter. Arrows up 20 to 7, and the Rams were about six inches away from getting in to the end zone. And now, just like that, push back five yards. That's a big five yards when you're a team that doesn't throw the ball well. Correct. Yeah, you know, they tried to throw the ball four times from the 10 yard line, incomplete four times. The defensive holding gave them new life, you know, for a five yard run. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the Rams come back and try to run the ball again. You know, that's what they want to do now under two and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, this is over a six minute drive at this point. So the Rams need to get in with some urgency if they're going to get in tonight. Clock rolling. 2.15 to go. Hand off. It's the big guy. Stevens, Stevens up the middle. Maybe he pushed behind the right side. He's inside the five. Game of one. But now it's second down and goal at the four yard line. They got to hurry. Yeah, taking a, an eye on the play clock again, you know. They do have one timeout left here. Hutchison and company waiting for the call. Guys, there's under two minutes to go. <laughs> Officials spotted the ball, started the play clock. Yeah, 35 seconds is about the time the play clock starts running, and we've already lost 10 seconds. Here we go. Second down and goal at the four. Hutchison under center. 
Oh, confusion. Oh, a little uh, miscommunication. He went to hand it off, and the guy was, it was Stevens as the up back was not ready for it. He went right, Stevens went left. Exactly, yeah, quarterback turned left. The fullback went right. Uh, tried to spin around quick, but at that time, defense is already on you. So probably a loss of one. Uh, more importantly, Rams are going to take one more timeout because they are not prepared for a fourth down call. Third down and goal, Tony, and they waste another six or seven seconds before then calling the timeout. And a tough one here right now. Madison in a tough spot. They have to knock it in to give themselves an opportunity at an onside kick. The arrows and the Rams, 20 to seven. It was locked up at seven earlier. The arrows have scored 13 here in the second half on homecoming. Yeah, good fumble recovery in, in the third quarter, you know, kind of changed the, the scene of the game. Arrow scored two plays after that to go up by seven. Uh, another interception uh, later in, uh, early in the fourth quarter, I guess, late in the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter, has really made this an arrow second half. Uh, Madison now on a, about a six minute drive, trying to, to punch it in, uh, but really hasn't had a whole lot of success here in quarters th three or four here in Ashland. Our friends up at Plymouth lost a tough one to Norwalk St. Paul, 24-21. Fall to three and three. Look like Worcester and West Holmes in a close one still. Hillsdale with a big win, 30 to seven over Chippewa. Here we go, third down and goal for the Rams. Hutchison under center, Brooks wide left. Stevens and Warren in the backfield. Hand off to Stevens. Nope, Hutchison kept it. He's in trouble, and oh, he is tackle. sacked back at the 15-yard line. Brian Hasse just causing confusion again. Hasse with a big sack. The second. Looked almost like they were coming out trying to run an option play to the right. You know, Hasse knows his responsibilities quarterback, so he goes right for him. You know, Hutchinson tries to, like, Make up his mind, am I going to throw it, am I going to toss it? Goes down for a sack there for Hasse. Fourth and goal now at the 10, and we're under a minute. A lot of clock running off between plays here. And they're going to have to get this one in. Hutchison and the Rams up under center. 40 seconds to go. They got a score on this play. Back to pass. Looking, low rolls left. He's going to tuck it and run. He's got a chance, and he's wrapped up at the three-yard line. The arrows with a big tackle. Colin Rohr and Parker Grissinger in on the tackle. Yeah, 33 seconds to go in the game, no timeouts. That will seal it for Ashland. Just needs to run out there and take a knee. 33 seconds remaining for the Arrows to move to two and four before they head to Mansfield Senior next week. And then another winnable game against Lexington. The Arrows with their arrow pointed up right now. 33 seconds remaining and an opportunity here to put this one away, obviously, with just a knee. First and 10, run one play here, maybe two. Should just be one. It should be one, yep, and we're at 33 seconds to go. And they take a knee on first down and 10, and that should do it, the Arrows and Rams. And what turned out to be a really competitive game and a fun one as the Arrows come away with a victory on homecoming. 20 to seven here at Community Stadium. As the seconds tick down, 10 seconds remain. The Arrows will not have to take another snap. What a win for the Arrows here at Community Stadium. Final score, Arrows 20, Rams seven. Back with more to wrap this one up here on iHeart Radio. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Lender. Craftsman. Dog Dad. 
We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. to that Ashland Arrows marching band here at Community Stadium. Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne bringing you all the action on football Friday nights for the Arrows this season. Maybe a few other regional games as we head towards the postseason. The Arrows with a big 20 to seven win. They're second in a row after last week's 35 to 17 victory at Mount Vernon. The Arrows come up with their second straight win. Hey, you can find all the scores from Football Friday Night on the North Central State College scoreboard at our website, WNCOAM, brought to you by North Central State College. NC State can change your life and prepare you to change the world. Brandon Wells and Tony Van Dyne here in the post game, live from Community Stadium. Football Friday night, Tony, and it's you got some scores. Yeah, taking a look at that scoreboard you were just talking about, Mansfield Tigers, where we're ahead next week to take on uh, the TY Tigers. Uh, look to things, look to have things under control. 23-14 against Lexington. Uh, a more exciting game going on. Worcester and West Holmes. West Holmes now in the lead, 41 to 37. Uh, they're going to run up the scoreboard uh, until the, you know the final whistle blows. So we'll see those two teams uh, in about three or four weeks. Wow. West Holmes up 41 to 37 with just 29 seconds left is what I have. Did uh, you say it's right. over? It's not over yet. Not no. over quite yet. Worcester will get the ball back in a very short amount of time to try to pull out a miracle against Mansfield Senior. Lexington has the ball last I saw down nine with a minute or two left. So that one approaching the end as well. Take a look at the final stats for you here on iHeartRadio and over on the OH Report. Total yards actually not that far apart, Tony. Yeah, Ashland, you know, obviously, you know, wanting to throw the ball, did a good job. 16 of 23 passing for 171 yards. Couldn't ever quite get the rushing yard 
uh, game going, uh, 103 between spots uh, and McFrederick primarily. Uh, over on the other side, the Rams, who want to run the ball, only put up 117 rushing yards, but obviously the score feels a lot closer than that. Penalties end up being a, a big part of this game. Seven for Madison and nine for Ashland. Both of those teams are going to go back. None of them were, again, none of them were bad penalties or like late hits out of bounds, but they were just mental errors of, you know, offsides, jumping off, uh, negated a couple big plays for Ashton late in the game, uh, and unfortunately for Madison, just ran a lot of clock in that fourth quarter trying to go into the end zone. Uh, so Madison Rams fall 7-20, to Ashton Arrows win number two. Big turnover story here tonight. Two for Madison. One didn't hurt him, but one did. Yeah, uh, I think it ended up being three turnovers because we got one one fumble uh, in the oh, mid you're right. middle yeah. of the field. Hyder yep. got it. We ended up scoring yep. off of that one. That was a big turnover. We got a big <laughs> A, a, a pizza from the, the rest of the hey, Ashton guys. Thank yes, you very sir. much. We're going to eat that in a little bit. Mr. Paramore, <clears throat> thank you very much. The other two turnovers, yeah, didn't didn't result in anything uh, against Madison. So uh, good job by Ashland, you know, taking care of business, doing what they need to do, um, getting the win. This is win number uh, seven in consecutive against the Madison Rams. So that Madison uh, team going to try to figure things out as they continue their OCC schedule. Uh, and we take a look at the Mansfield Tigers next well, week. Well, the Rams will be at home against Marion Harding, who is 3-2 and two entering tonight. And then they're at Mount Vernon. And then they've got Lexington at home and at Mansfield Senior. So they've got a tough road ahead of them. Mount Vernon, a potential game that they might be able to compete with and could be a potential win for the Rams. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, the bottom of the OCC, you know, someone's got to be last. Battle the, to stay out of the basement, <laughs> right? Uh, that's okay. That's going to be, the, yeah. But the Rams ended up knocking off Mansfield Tigers last year. You know, they went into that game 0-9 and, and came out with a victory. So this team does have skill. They do have potential. Uh, it's just a matter of getting it together. This is only game number four for these guys. Again, taking two weeks off in the middle of the season for COVID has to kind of put a wrench in your plan both from a coaching standpoint and from a student standpoint, just trying to get back into the swing of school. So we head to Mansfield Senior next week. Tony, you, you know, what do you what do you preview there a week out? What do you think the arrows chances are down there at Arlen Field? You know, the Mansfield Tigers keep talking about their defense being so great. Ashland's been struggling on offense, so they're gonna have to find a few new wrinkles. We're not gonna be able to run the ball. We're gonna be able we're gonna have to find a way to throw the ball against the Tigers. Negate big plays would be the, the other thing that I would put out for the Ashland uh, defense. Other than two big plays last week against uh, the Yellow Jackets and maybe two big plays here, right? Two big passes and a couple kick returns. Ashland does a good job of keeping you inside of 10 yards on plays, but when you're giving up six and seven, that's still enough to move the ball consistently. So they're going to have to do some work, uh, especially looking at the Tigers next week. Hey, I know we don't have an official one tonight, but I would say my player of the game is Brian Hasse. Who threw for? Didn't he? He threw for a uh, a big play to, to, to Grayson Stewart, and he had a couple of sacks defensively and played really well. Yeah, he's really come on great for the Arrows here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, was a big part of their game plan last year. You know, especially towards the end of the season, had some guys banged up. Um, thought we'd see a lot of him as a two back set. You know, kind of in that 21 personnel or that 20 personnel, even without a tight end. Didn't see a lot of him until last week. So I wonder if Coach Cedar. Uh, and th that running offense kind of figured out like, hey, actually having two guys back there, having spots back there as an option and having Hossie back there actually gives us a little bit more creativity with McFrederick running the ball. So the three-headed approach actually feels, well, it's given us two wins. So it's obviously working so far for the Arrows. Well, it's been a pleasure tonight, Tony. The Arrows pull out a big one, 20 to seven, and they move to two and four. The Rams fall to 0 and four. For my man Daniel Dunbar back at the station, for all my friends over at the OH Report tonight, and for Aaron Hines, thanks for the interviews, buddy. I really appreciate it. Hope your game went well. For Tony Van Dyne, I'm Brandon Wells saying, have a great night, Godspeed, God bless, and go Arrows. Bitch. That's been the Fox Sports 1340.